Well, he, he, he could, can't take on d1. He could try queen h6, king g8, knight f6 check, king f7, and then queen h5 check, but that king might just go on a journey. And the thing is, if you're not mating black, you're losing because of the material. Right. So. Yeah, king g1 loses because rook takes f1, king takes f1, rook d1. Yeah, you're, you're just king is uh, just king f2, and then you just have queen checks. I assume that's winning. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. You even go queen b6 check to trade queens there, so that would be a problem. Right. The knight of six check is the risky move to play. Go queen e6, okay. Meyer doesn't have much time, but he can just move his king back. So I think it's gonna be... Yeah, and neither side has enough to really... I mean, Duda has to make the decision here, but it looks bad and he has four seconds, so he should just but draw. Meyer doesn't have like that much time left in all these moments. You know, it's... Right. But I don't see anything Duda can do. The rook takes d1 for it. Rook takes f1, excuse me, followed by rook d1 as a threat. So I, this is a draw. So let's knight f6 <gasps> check. Knight f6. If queen f6, rook takes d1. So he's... Okay, now queen g5 check. Oh, queen h7, it's mate. It's mate. Knight d7, double check. Queen f7, mate. He found it. He. F I mean, it shouldn't have been a win. I don't think... I think he... Um, Georg Meyer blundered, but that was incredible play. And there goes the ambulance. Perfect. We are here. This is Grandmaster Robert Hess here. Thrilled, absolutely ecstatic to spend Valentine's Day commentating alongside Alexandra Botez. Alexandra, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. Excited to be here covering the Central Division. Hopefully, we're going to see some heartbreaks, but only on the chessboard today. I see what you did there. You're, you brought your, your good funny jokes already. You bring them out. I'm trying, I'm trying. Warming up, you know? You know, I, I did bring bagel puns with me today. I have not eaten a bagel today, but I was someone was sending me bagel puns. I found them funny, so I'm going to have to sprinkle them in here and there throughout the commentary today. Okay, I'm, I'm looking forward to these bagel puns. Every time I see them, I'll try to use a bagel emote. Or just laugh, because that's easier. <laughs> well, laughing at least will make me feel good. That way I don't have to watch you just shake your head at me in disgust. And... <laughs> Uh, well, we are covering the Central Division today. That has the likes of Jan Christoph Duda. We have uh, Maxime vachet le -Grave. I actually put up a little thing here that shows all the players for each team. So I'm proud to have that ready. And you're not I am David Pr Pruis this week, because last time I used the wrong template. Right, but we have the right names this time. We do. 
And um, okay. So which which of these players are you can be multiple? Are you most excited to see play today on Valentine's? Well, I'm always excited to see the top players like MVL playing. So that those are going to be some games I'm looking forward to as well. Um, Alejandro Diaz, he is an extremely strong board from fro board four from the Barcelona Raptors. So also excited yep. to see him beating up on the other teams. What about you, Robert? Did you well? Did you make a fantasy chess team this week? No, I always make a fantasy team in my head as we're doing commentary that I'm secretly rooting for. I just don't get points for it, so. Okay, well, that, that's totally I have fair. to give you guys a chance in the Fantasy League. I'm actually, at least before the earlier matches today from the Eastern Division, I was in second place in the Fantasy competition. That's pretty impressive. You know, I, sometimes you pick correctly. Most of the time I don't. But occasionally I'm, I'm doing uh, <clears throat> my A game. And I picked... Who's on your Fantasy today? Oh, yeah. Well, I picked Maxime Vachet-Legrave because how could you not? He's board one for the Marseille Migrants, and they're playing the Norway Gnomes. And Norway is a very good team, obviously, but he just outrates their board one by 200 and some like 20 points. And mm -hmm. how could you not go with Maxime? Like MVL, the Frenchman with three names, hard not to love. That's fair, but yesterday, not yesterday, when we were doing Pro Chess League commentary, you picked the top three GMs, you picked Shankland, Daniel Naroditsky and Nagy Parmajaran, and that didn't go so well. So hopefully your top GM picks will be better today. Hey, it went pretty well, okay? It didn't go perfectly. None of them got a perfect 4-0, but three points, two and a half, two and a half. I was uh, happy about that. And we actually had- You're happy about it? Okay, maybe I'm being too hard then. Yeah, you are. And the games are underway, but let me pull up the standings real quick here just to remind everybody that in the Central Division here, the Baden-Baden Snowballs are actually the team in first place with 107 and a half points, followed by the Norway Gnomes. I was just talking about how MVL is going to put the beat down on them, but they're in second place and clearly a formidable team. Uh, yeah, so you know, we have this matchup between Khan and Baden-Baden underway right now. And Alexander, do you think Baden-Baden is going to continue to push its lead in the field, or do you think Khan can bring them down? Well, I think Baden Baden has the advantage in this matchup mostly because they're top of the pack right now and they have a pretty strong roster. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree with that. I mean, they're more of an even lineup because, yes, they have Georg Meyer at the mm -hmm. forefront of their, their roster. He's amazing for them. But it will help, actually, if, <laughs> to speak about the chessboard I have in front of us. Jan Christoph Duda hasn't moved yet. So it will help if he forfeits. That will certainly help the snowballs. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Well, you know, he's really good at rapids, so maybe he just doesn't need all the time there. Um, I know when you're playing FIDE tournaments, if you're not there when the game starts in certain events, you just forfeit. I wonder how much time they're allowed to have during these Pro Chess League matches before they forfeit. I, I think, I hope they get the full 15 minutes. And you know, let me see if I can see if uh, young Chris is on Facebook. Maybe I can give him a little Facebook message. Be yeah, like, ping him. Yeah, let's just hey, try. Anna Chess in the chat. Let's try to... uh, good to see you, Anna Rudolph. No, I don't. Lovely see... commentary I... earlier on. She's using the bagels, the emotes. Anna knows what's up. They're allowed their entire clock, according to Greg Shahadi. Okay. Well, Got it. We'll let Duda use his clock. And Alexandra, well, first, As... hi, Adana. I got to give Anna a shout out because you just gave a shout out. I got to second you there but i wanted to go to this game between mazetovic and kirill alexianko because i just saw the move g4 played mm -hmm. and i don't know about you but when i see g4 and a black pawn on h6 that really concerns me well who are you more concerned for here white having a questionable attack <laughs> or <laughs> or black you know about to get the king side blasted open yep um well Whenever I see a pawn on h6, I, this is, reminds me of the Kromnik game against Levon Aronian from the candidates, right? In that game, Kromnik had played rook g8, he was black, so essentially rook g1 first, and then pawn to g4, mm -hmm. and went against this. When you put this pawn on h6, it, it's called a hook. Mm -hmm. so, it, so it's a lot easier to break open the king side here because black has already push forward one of his pawns. A hundred percent, right? That's, you know, the good thing of pushing a pawn is you give your king some space. The bad thing is it makes it easier to attack because it's further up the board, which means that the mm -hmm. white pawn doesn't take as many moves to get there. So when I see this move g4 followed by rook g1 coming, I think black, if you 
forced me to bet, I think Black is going to get toasted in this game. Toasted. Okay. Toasted. That's a bold prediction here. I'm hoping to see some toasting going on. Um, Sebastian is going to bring on the fire and the attack here. It, I do agree that the H6 pawn is not ideally placed in this position here. But at the same time, he is ahead in development. So maybe he's going to be able to get some interesting counterplay, maybe bringing his knight over to d4, opening up his bishop. Yeah, actually, this, no, Alexander, you're pointing out a great idea with knight to d4 because if someone is attacking you on the king side, oftentimes you want to uh, open the center, right? Because look where that white king is stationed in the center of the board. So mm -hmm. if I can, as black, open up the center, for example, if I could play d7 to d5 in one move, I'd be much happier about my chances. But of course, I can't do that with my bishop just sitting like a big pawn on d6. Right. Um, and I, I guess we, we didn't comment on this because it is something we often don't even consider. But knight takes g4, looking like it potentially grabs a free pawn, mm -hmm. would fall instantly after rook g1, which attacks the knight and once the knight moves the h6 pawn falls yep and this is pretty illustrative of an overall theme where you often don't want to take your opponent's pawns even if they're free if it means opening up the attack on your king side yeah that's a very uh, instructional point there and also the fact that black loses a pawn back is even worse but even yeah. if white wasn't winning the pawn h6 as you just said alexandra that's a problem because you're just giving a free attack the pawn is not nearly as valuable as the attack that's about to rage on the king. So bishop e7 was just played by Alexianko, and I like that move. It's a bit passive, you could say, but it, if black is able to go, say, knight h7, so rook g1, knight h7, it is mm -hmm. much harder to make an attack because I'm trying to cover this g5 square at all costs. Right. How would you comment on black having moved his bishop twice already in the opening? We know that's not the ideal developmental strategy here, but it seems like he had to tweak his position a little bit. Yeah, and actually that's a good point to look at the opening because it was a four knight with bishop to b5 on move four for white. We often see um, the d4, the four knight scotch, but here bishop b5 was played. That's why bishop b6 came on the board to make sure the e5 pawn was well defended because after bishop c6 and then a pawn takes c6, the knight would be attacking the pawn, but that's what the bishop is uh, situated on d6 for. And so that's a very um, good point that the bishop moved twice. And look at this, g5. And actually, Alexandra, in the chat over there, Leon Beast, that's MVL, says Kempion Mazetovich. He's rooting on his friend, Sebastian Maze. That's what he should be doing. I love the support from Pro Chess League players, seeing them actually comment in the chess.com chat. Yep. It's definitely been one of my favorite parts from the last couple of streams. Yeah, and Wesley So in particular is like really good about that. He's always in the chat, um, either rooting on his teammates or just kind of commentating, honestly, about the Kibitzing, game. Kibitzing, yeah. yeah. And Alexander, your move, knight d4 on the board. I really like this move as a defensive setup for black because now this knight on d4 hits the bishop on b5. It offers a trade with the knight on f3. And I think the first thing we should discuss is if you take the knight on d4 and pawn takes d4, well, look at that expanding center for black. It looks very nice. And so... You can retreat with the knight to e2, but all of a sudden you're pushing white backwards and moves like d5 come very naturally. And this king on e1, not happy in the center. Right. Black is finally starting to open up his position here, and there are no immediate threats he has to deal with on his king side. Um, the, the story would be a little bit different if you didn't have a pot on h2 and the file was a little bit more open. Yep. But if black can gain advantage that quickly in the center and freeing up his bishop then it seems like our evaluation might start to favor black here yeah and i guess one more thing that you pointed out earlier but is applicable in this situation it's always nice when instructional points come to show again is knight takes e5 as a move for starters there's going to be a problem with um, your pieces on the fifth rank right because you mm -hmm. have many of them here and you probably should be concerned about just losing a piece with ideas with you know, let's say, does knight takes b5? How do I do this? Something, there's definitely something tactical in the position here um, that should win material. Maybe d6, actually. And then just, your knight can't retreat to f3 because bishop g4 right. comes. So, yeah, the, the knight doesn't have anywhere to go. If the knight goes to c4, then you get 
yeah. an attack with bishop g4. Yeah. Just Black's just able to develop really quickly there. Yeah, so can't even take a free pawn. I, I, you know, rook g1 was played, knight takes bishop, knight takes knight, and I expect a move like d5 to be played. But uh, it, this game will be complicated and will be going on for a while. So, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Crushing Fatal Blow was just asking about the e5 pawn as well. So thank you for asking Crushing Fatal Blow. And if you guys have any questions or you think there's a move that maybe we didn't go deep enough into, let us know in the chat. We're paying attention. We see you and we appreciate you guys watching this now i'm going to stop calling it valentine's day today i'm, I'm done with this day <laughs> watching on this regular thursday this regular thursday except it's not regular we can't lie this is pro chess league thursday True. with True. commentary by myself and the one and only alexander botes so that's not i mean it's becoming a regular thing because it's you know kind of weekly but that is a special thursday in and of itself there we go Okay, you put it even better than I did. I'll take that. Yeah, you know, I'm, I have to speak for my living here, you know, doing commentary, but sometimes I can speak about things other than chess. And I, you know, yep. just... Oh, and uh, also good news, Duda has moved. Aha, uh -huh. good news. So I went over to that game. The good news is Duda has moved. The bad news is we saw Petrov. But the good news about this <laughs> particular You're Petrov... such an opening hater. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay i can't help it because there's just some openings i like some i don't however this petrov is actually pretty reasonable and exciting because unlike some dry petrovs where it's a very symmetrical and you know you, it just doesn't suit my fancy here we mm -hmm. see that there's a knight on e4 black just went pawn d6 to d5 just uh make sure that knight is defended i can see black playing c5 soon um white on the other hand doesn't have as quick of an initiative uh, building up here. So I think that I like Black's chances, not just because he's a high-rated player. Okay. I, I see why you prefer Black here. Um, thinking a little bit from White's position, at least her knight seems to be controlling a lot of the board right now on d4. Yep. Unfortunately, she's not going to be able to secure that square for long enough. If the knight was outposted there, so if Black couldn't push the knight away with c5, would that change your evaluation of the position here, even if Black has the bishop pair? Oh, absolutely. So if that pawn on c7, let's say, was on c4, I understand that would yeah. kick my bishop away, but I'd be much happier about the placement of my knight. And actually, you sort of just inspired me to think about this. Maybe white should take this knight on e4. And that way, after pawn takes e4, white can play queen to g3 and spy on the c7 pawn and say, well, if now c5 looks much more dangerous because you're giving me the d6 square, my knight can just hop right in. So c right. c5... I and can... we also have knight f5 threats. Exactly. Since the bishop is pinned, and now white might even get an attack here. Oh, for sure, yeah. No, that's You're absolutely correct. You, you're leading me to... You know, you're asking the right questions. <clears throat> you're giving me the... Uh, you're leading me on to say, oh, let's uh, figure out what to do, because you're right, c5 is something that bothers me. I want to keep my knight there. And if black does play c5, I don't really know where my knight is going, because I can't go to f5 with the bishop on d7, and I can't really, right. let's say I go h3. Once c5 comes, I can't go to b5 either, because then you have c4. Uh, or yeah. actually, maybe even queen b6 is strong, or something like that with problems in the b2 square. Yeah, and obviously, we often like trying to keep our bishop pairs in positions like these, especially when they're more open. But when your opponent has such a strong piece like the knight on e4, um, and you're helping stop a future plan of his, that's when you might consider disrespecting your bishop pair a little bit. Yep. yep. Uh, somebody's asking how long uh, Dada spent to make his first move. Greg beat me to it, but he had two minutes and 20 seconds that he gave up. Probably he just wasn't there on time, but thankfully he didn't forfeit his game, and he's almost equal time with Ina Agres here. Yeah, and for those who know Jan Kristof Duda, he went to the semifinals of the Speed Chess Championship. So I'm not too worried about him getting in time trouble in this initial game. Because even if he does, well, he's proven that he can uh, be a true force. That's true. That's true. Um, even if he is really good at Blitz, obviously, players like to have their time. But I would say there are some players whose strength decreases a lot le a lot less when they get in time pressure, and he's definitely one of them. Yeah, that, that's, that's definitely true. Um, you, you mentioned something about giving up the bishop pair, so then I just caught out of the corner of my eye Georg Meyer's game against Augustin Droin. And, well, I have it from Georg Meyer's perspective right now with the black pieces, and he has the two bishops. 
So when you see a position like this, Alexandra, I mean, it's firstly you admire that it's from the French defense. Uh, you know I do. <laughs> <laughs> so does this position really make you happy to see because you uh, must have some experience in similar positions with the black pieces? Well, it's a French defense, but I don't have a terrible light squared bishop. So that's mm -hmm. already a win. I'm used to my bishop struggling until we finally get to end game positions like this and he's a little bit more open and more active. So I definitely prefer this position for black so far. Um, his rooks are active on the D file doubled up. His bishop on E8 looks like it's a little bit inactive because it's on the back rank, but he's actually very flexible and he'll be able to hop around to C6 or to H5. He has a lot of ideas here. So H5 actually looks very scary in the future because it's targeting the rook, which is protecting the bishop here. Yeah. Um, but, or bishop A4 here. Yeah, actually, I think that bishop on E8 is actually a beast. Yeah, no, that bishop on E8. F4 here, actually, white. I love it. Using a bishop. F4 check. Right I, I think that's the way to go because F4 yeah. check, where is this king going to go to? If you go king to E2, the question is, can I just go rook takes D3, rook takes <laughs> D3, and then bishop B5, something like that, and say, I mean, yeah, this is you're just in this deadly pin and you can't get out of it because the only way to protect that rook is rook to d1. But then I say, Alexandra, play like you know, what's your next move is white? I'll just I'll pass. What's your move? Uh, wow, well, that that's kind of depressing. Okay, I guess if, if you pass, I can only try to bring my rook to d1. Yeah, so your, your rook's on d1. I, I let your rook stay there now. Now I pass, right? My bishop's on b5, pinning your rook. What's your next move? I kind of have to wait here. Exactly, but you're going to run out I of mean, moves. I mean, sure, a4, a4. <laughs> yeah, then I'll just go bishop c4 to make sure I keep this pin going. And that's sort of the point, right? I can go e5 yeah. and try to go e4, and you're just stuck. So this would be completely hopeless yeah. for white. I love being on the side that's stuck and has no good moves. <laughs> that's why I made you try to suggest <laughs> yeah, a move Yeah, understandable, there. understandable. Yeah, and bishop a4 was played, because now rook d2 is the only move that keeps the bishop defended. But after rook d2, again, if I say, what's your next few moves? You're still stuck because there's a deadly pin along the D file here, and you're not getting out of it. This is a really tragic position for uh, Augustin Droin. Yeah, actually, I think that depressing uh, exercise, depressing for the side trying to defend it, did illustrate just how bad this position is for White. If you have all the moves in the world and there's no way you could improve your position, yep. not a good sign. Not even a little bit. But yeah. more interesting because I think. Georg Meyer is going to win this one quite easily from here. But the game between Sebastian Maze and Kirill Alexanko, it's getting weird over here because White just sacrificed a piece. The last move played was, so we saw after knight takes b5, White took back on b5 and move 11, c6, mm -hmm. attacking the knight. He said, well, have fun with that knight on b5. I don't care about it. He's trying to just rip open this black king side. Kirill Alexanko got defensive, knight e8, makes perfect sense. And then queen d2 came on the board. Instead of a simple move like knight to c3, retreating and then trying to make the attack later, he said, well, I'm going to play queen to d2 because I just want to get my queen over to the king side and checkmate you. Right. And one of the ideas that queen d2 has is potentially moves like bishop takes g7 or moving the bishop gives the queen a square on h6 to come into the attack there. Yep. So that's what black is going to have to be dealing with here. Um, e5 is also hanging, not that white needs to take it, but... Right, I guess this is a position where we should just, well, go through the moves, right? C takes b5, that's yep. the most logical move. I take on g7, you take back, I go queen h6, and you're threatening checkmate in one move, right? Because yep. this queen and rook team up on g7, so bishop f6 is the only possibility. And then my question is, can white go king, or castle queen side, rook g3, other rook to g1, and is there time for this kind of just checkmate maneuver. In fact, rook takes g7 is a big threat. That is a big threat. And obviously, white has to be a little bit careful here to make sure that he has time to just castle and bring his pieces in since he did sacrifice a piece. Yep. But again, it's similar to the position we were looking at before where black doesn't have any good defensive moves that are fast enough. Yeah, I mean, maybe rook to e8 and just trying to run with the king, but I don't see a way out of this. It just looks... I mean, I don't really see it. what you can do a queen e7. No, that doesn't look good either. There's always right. going to be rook g3, rook g1. So this is a very... And we can even take on g7 right away and then bring the rook to g1 yeah, exactly. instead of yeah. just doubling. 
Yeah, this is tough. So that's why Kirill Alexienko went bishop f6. So I just brought the live board back up. Bishop f6 was played here, and it's just the safe choice, right? Defending this g7 pawn a second time. But now if I'm white, I just retreat knight c3 and do the same exact plan where I haven't sacrificed a piece, and I haven't ripped open the king yet, but I can do that at any point. Right. It looks like your prediction early on in this game was pretty accurate, where you thought black was going to get toasted. Yeah, I still think black's going to get toasted. Maybe objectively it's okay. I don't know. It looks really scary. But uh, I am looking at the chat, by the way, uh, Floyd Akash. So people talk about knight g5. So I guess let's just go through that very quickly. There's so many games going mm -hmm. on that um, it's going to be hard to cover every single variation. But let's uh, try to think about this line. So queen h6, bishop f6, and knight to g5. Well, knight to g5 there in that continuation, the problem is you're threatening mate in one, but then the rook can slide to e8 as a way to give the king some space with f8 and run to e7. So that's a very good question. And someone said it forces bishop takes knight. It didn't actually force bishop takes knight because I can play rook e8 and run away with my king. So that's just something that when you're tasked with a really tough defense, you should be able to think about. Maybe I can run away with my king. Say knight h7. Wow, they're just going full-on attack. Maybe rook e6, only move. This is scary, though. The, I agree with you all. That kind of stuff is scary, and I, you know, you're making me calculate way too much considering this is the first round of these matches. So They're just trying to warm you up, Robert. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with this thing here. But I do think that black is close to escaping uh, here because with this rook on e6 protecting the bishop a second time, it looks like black is, uh, up, well, black is up two pieces and just maybe one or two moves away from fully surviving. For example, king e2, even a move like bishop to g5 is nice. That way I just block the g-file, threaten your queen, and if you play queen takes g5, we're just trading queens and I'm up a piece. So, um, yeah. Well, this is exactly what we wanted, chat. If you guys have questions, there's a move you want to see, let us know. We'll take a look at it as well. Yeah, and I think we should probably go around to more games just to, to catch up. Yeah. I will definitely keep I, it on. I was going to say the George Meyer game ended up very similar to what you said. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny, so maybe we should take a quick look there. Oh, boy. So um, speaking of oh, boy, that means i got to bring out the e old emote here. Where is my oh, boy emote? For those of you not subbed to my channel. There it if is. If you're not subbed to Hess's channel and you just saw that explanation, I expect better logic reasoning from you. You know you got to go <sighs> smash that sub button right now. Yep. Maybe later, though. But G Georg Meyer, he, you, you were right, Alexander. He won exactly as we were discussing. F4 that, check. That, it was really funny. <laughs> Takes. Bishop b5. The exact same thing. e5. And look at this. White plays f3 to stop black from playing e4. But unfortunately, you can't do anything because there's this deadly pin here and two pieces attacking d3, which means you can only shuffle. Do the rook shuffle d1 to d2 or move a pawn. And e4, king to e5, came in threatening. King takes e4 and finally winning this rook on d3. Wow. Beautiful ending. I, White couldn't do anything. It's very artistic that there's a rook on d8 just hanging. Black technically down in exchange in the position if you're counting material. But there's nothing White can do. Nothing at all. That's that's sad life. That feels really bad, man. That feels awful. Like, just I've been in this situation before where you're just trying to survive, but you know, slowly your opponent, or quickly in this case, your opponent just building up the pressure and winning. So yeah, let's go around the horn. Vincent Keimer is playing against Maxime Lagarde. All right. Um, and a shout out to our mods today. Good to see you, T and Z Nation Chess. You're also a mod, but you know, I'm not going to come give you a shout out that easily. <laughs> gotta, but yeah, you thank you guys harder. for being here and helping. Absolutely. Yeah. We always got to thank the mods. You keep the chat uh, a great place to be and to learn chess. So thank you. Um, yeah. So MVL's game. No, is this is not MVL. This is just yet. it's M L. -L. <laughs> it's just, tricky it. because they're both French and one they're both named Maxime, but yeah. one is Maxime Vacher Lagrave and the other is Maxime Lagarde. So exactly, it's a little bit close. Obviously, very different teams. But like I said, I'm excited to see MVL's games today. So sometimes my brain just fills in the blanks for what it wants to see. No, it's completely understandable. Here. Not to give any Lex credit to Maxime number two, but... <laughs> well, oh, okay, I can't call him that. That just... Wow. All right. Anyway. Yeah, well, well he's Maxime number one. His team's hard, because he plays for Khan and MVL plays for um, the Migraines of Marseille. But here, this move, Rook yeah. to D1, is kicking this bishop off D4, and one, the first thing I notice is this long diagonal, right? The king's on H8, there's a rook on E5. So if I move this bishop, say, to C5, 
Then aren't I immediately met with a pawn to b4, followed up by bishop to b2, winning the exchange on this long diagonal? That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that looks good. Um, obviously, black is also going to grab an extra pawn for the exchange on b4, but he's opening up the b file. I'm sure white is going to be able to take back one of his queenside pawns later on. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, it's better for white. I'm just curious if he has anything better than... Yeah, I mean, if I'm, I guess if I'm black, I'd play bishop to b6 just to avoid that b4 move with tempo, right? So bishop right. to b6, b4 doesn't really make as much sense because I can just move my king out of the way. Yeah. And then your pawn on b4 is a little bit iffy. So bishop b6 looks like a better try. And it's good for everyone watching to, that's why bishop b6 was played, and that's why white didn't play b4 because why would you put the pawn on b4 when it's much safer on the b2 square where you can just play bishop c3 next? Right. And what's happening here is white is repositioning his bishop on c3 and i think it's worth pointing out that he played bishop d2 and bishop c3 instead of b3 and bishop b2 because both those move orders bring the bishop on the long diagonal but bishop c3 is much better than a pawn moving your pawn to b3 and weakening your pawn structure a little bit Whereas the bishop on c3 is protected by the pawn, it's a lot more structurally sound. Absolutely, but structurally sound f3 to f4 is not. I mean, that, okay, rook h5 is, this is sort of a weird move because I like the rooks in the e file. I don't know why the rook decided to move to h5. I guess f5 was scaring um, Maxime Lagarde here, but this rook on h5, I mean, can I? Yeah, I mean, the, the immediate repercussion of f3 it was protecting e4 so i'm curious why he didn't play rook e4 yeah that's a great question right that you kind of give up this e4 square for that rook that's i would have been much happier playing rook e4 i think that's a that's a good move it's a better move than what happened in the game because look what's happening here he gave up yeah. the e file and knight h6 uh is he trying to checkmate him with like knight g4 rook takes h2 but <laughs> bishop e2 is a very good backwards move. You cannot take this pawn on d5 because bishop c4 comes back. That's right. pinning and winning. Right. So rook f5, now I play g4. Just like you're giving me, I have a three on two on the king side. And so g4 mm -hmm. is a move that I want to play to advance those pawns. And maybe I could follow it up um, just with king to g2, king to g3, things like that, and play a slow, methodical approach on the king side. Yeah, white is getting all of the space advantage there on the king side. And also, okay, so chat is going a little bit crazy. Greg is telling us to look at the uh, Alex Cinco game. Also, we have Georg Meyer in the chat. Whoa. Very nice win. We loved seeing that. We like the way you just kept his bishop, your bishop pinning his rook, giving your opponent nothing to do. And Nubbins Goody, one of the Tetris world champions. Yeah, what's up, Nubbins Goody? Well, you got to let us know what's goody with this game over here because wow. Sebastian Mazze sacked the knight on d6 to move 14. It was captured. Then the queen went right to h6, trying to go for checkmate. Knight back to e8. But look how much material he sacrificed in the process. I mean, this cannot work out. You're down. What is he down? He's down a rook. And this move, rook to d7, is nice because queen h8 mate was threatened after move 21, knight g6. So rook d7 stops the mate and protects this queen. So that when queen h8 comes, it's not winning the queen on d8. So f4, and how can you play this slowly when you're down a rook and a minor piece? Right. So I guess my, the first question in the current position is, if it was white's turn to move, what is the threat? It looks like it's knight h5, continuing to put pressure on the pin knight on the g file. So that is a threat that black has to stop. Yeah, knight h5 is really annoying because it also hits the f6 pawn, right, with check. So right. maybe black should start with a move. Queen b6, I like that, hitting the rook on g1. And there's just no way this attack can work out for white. You're down so much material. And if you go rook to g3, then I think I can just go queen to f2, threatening mate on the e1 square and getting into a much more active position. So I, I don't believe in this. seems like a phantom attack for... Uh, for white, because even if I don't get mated, I can probably even sacrifice my queen on g3 at some point and say, well, I have two rooks and a bishop for a queen, and if I'm not getting checkmated, you're just completely lost. That's fair. Seems like Sebastian just messed up his attack here. I guess he's the one getting toasted this game. Yeah, no, this is... Uh, I, I'm eating my words. I also think I picked up on my fantasy team, so of course he's going to lose now. Oh, it hurts. 
It hurts. Oh, and uh, Duda just won his game. So we have the first result of the matchups today. No, well, Georg Meyer also won. So it's, and Georg, right, yeah. sorry, the no. second result. Yeah, you're all good. Just it means it's one-to-one. -one. They even the score because Georg won for Baden-Baden. He's bored one for them. And then Jan Christoph Duda's bored one. For, wow, this final position was also brutal. Like, yeah, <laughs> we, we have the board one slaughtering. Yeah. And, and so far. Th to show everybody why there was resignation, it looks like you could take this pawn, but after rook takes e4, I take your bishop on f2 with check, such that your king has to take my rook, and then your rook on e4 is hanging, black is up a bishop, and in a completely winning position. So a nice finishing tactic for Jan Christoph Duda. And, All right. Yeah. I hope to see a couple more crushing blows. Um, let's see if there, okay. The game between Jordan Van Forest and uh, David Stevanik is the furthest along so far. Okay, let me, I found that. So Jordan Van Forest with the black pieces here. What is going on? Isn't, wait, oh, okay. I thought for a second white was up a piece. Then I realized that black is up in exchange because I have yes. two rooks and you only have one. So right. you're loving the French today, essentially. I'm just saying we've seen a lot of good Frenches. I'm not bringing them here just because it's an amazing opening that everybody should learn from. But, you know, <laughs> when you have good positions like this, it's good to see what went well. Yeah, this looks real nice for black considering you're up in exchange. How did this happen? Let's go back about, you know, eight moves. So I'm on move 16. So rook f3 was played, bringing this rook to the third rank, a rook lift. Black went rook c4, rook b8 check. Bishop c8, okay, blocking the check, makes sense. Queen d1, and ah, this rook just got trapped on b8, didn't it? After queen to c7. So that's the rook that went too far. It uh, yep. had no way of coming back into the position, and so it gave up the rook yeah. for the bishop, and then, okay, this is where we are now. Yikes. It, it, looked, it looked like a very tempting check. We always like bringing our rooks all the way to the eighth rank. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to saw Black's king from castling, and his rook just ended up being stuck there. So, not the best result for that. No, not even that rook there. Not in the slightest. And this is already up in exchange. Okay, Black has to be a little bit careful because if you do castle, maybe at some point there'll be some e6 stuff that you have to be concerned about in your king. Uh, for example, c4 is a move that White can play, attacking this rook on b2. And if mm -hmm. I can take and start moving my pawns, then all of a sudden black feels uh, okay about the position. But that's pretty unrealistic for uh, any sort of mating threat to actually occur because you know black doesn't have to allow white to get everything that he wants. He can even just sacrifice his rook on b1 for the knight and then take this pawn on c4 and say, okay, my next move is bishop e6. I'm up two pawns in an opposite color bishop's position. I'm very happy. And sometimes it's the best strategy, right? When you're winning uh, with up a lot of material, give a little bit back to simplify the position. That's fair. And one of our viewers, Trey Leo, is saying, Black has isolated pawns, though. <laughs> that he certainly does on a6 and on d5. Uh, but so does white yep. Three. <laughs> on e5, c3, a2. And white is down material here, and his pieces don't have dreams of an attack that might have counterbalanced it. Yeah, this looks very, very bad for white here. Yeah, Dave, okay, but watch out because queen c1 threatens rook takes g7 check. So that's a big threat now. Um, that's true. So if I make a move like some kind of simple move like rook b7, then all mm -hmm. of a sudden rook takes g7 happens. And if I take queen g5 check and I have this draw where I go, my queen goes between f6 and g5, the black king will go between um, g8 and h8. And if this knight on b1 wasn't hanging and things like that, I would even be able to try to go for a checkmate by maybe pushing this pawn to e6. Of course, it, it's not going to pan out here with my knight hanging with check, but it's something to keep in mind for future games. If this knight wasn't under attack, you could probably get away with it. But still, this draw would be not good news for Jordan Van Forest and the Amsterdam Mosquitoes. That's true. He has to do something here to get rid of that attack. Maybe f4 is an interesting idea since queen can't take back because the knight is hanging on b1 and it's blocking the queen from getting to h6 i like that um, but the rook on b2 is also hanging so maybe white can just sack on g7 it's actually trickier than i would have expected 
Yeah, actually, f4 is a pretty good move because you're right. That rook will sacrifice in g7 and then take the rook on b2. But then mm -hmm. I could probably put my bishop on e6 and say, well, I'm up in exchange here. As soon as I move my rook away to b8, then my king can run to the center. And the king will be very safe on the d7 square as it's a light square. And uh, black, excuse me, white has a dark square bishop. Something like that. Right. F, f4 was played. Alexandra, you're on fire. There we go. Predicted the move. Woo. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good move. And it may be a necessary move because... Um, the, like you, we're talking about, this rook's under attack and this queen h6 ideas were going to be problematic. So yeah. the other move I would have really considered was rook to b6, just giving up the rook back for the bishop, and that way when I take back it's a check. And very importantly, if you don't take, my rook can slide over to g6, defending my king side completely. Right. Yeah, that also looks like a good way to defend. I was laughing at best Annie's comment, Karpov would cry. Isolated pawns everywhere, <laughs> cries and structural damage. Yeah, yeah it's a, it would be a scary sight. And Sandcat, thank you for pointing that out. If you comment, if you hover your mouse over Robert's face, just, you know, to, to try and distract him or something, you can also see the links to our Twitch accounts if you guys are enjoying and you want to maybe hang out with us off the stream as well. I mean, off this stream. Yeah, no, for sure. Um... And if you just want to hover over my face just so you don't have to see me anymore, I completely understand that as well. Uh, we see a game, a finished game, between Wouter Spolman and Boris Markoja, or Markoja, I don't know. The, the J's often have like that Y sound, right, in um, mm -hmm. the Slovenian team. So, yep, like Ljubljana. Yep, exactly. And here, Wouter Spolman is up a piece and two pawns, so his opponent resigned. That seems pretty reasonable. How did this happen? So white was... Let me know which move you're going back to. Yeah, move... move, move bleh, can't speak. Went back to move 18 for white f4. Black went queen c7. And I really like white's position here. So I don't know how things... Wait, I'm so confused by this position. It looks really nice for white. But he went knight e4, which looks good. Bishop to mm -hmm. e7. Went pawn f5. And I guess he completely missed this tactic, knight takes d4. That's where his downfall happened. Yep. So he just blundered a pawn there. Yeah. Oof. This this knight on e5 is a great piece, and it's defended by both pawns. But as soon as you go f5, you release the defense by one pawn. Knight takes d4, gets rid of the other. And after rook d4, queen e5, well, things started going downhill completely for white and black. Had right. Easy. Ooh, look at the tactic at the end with 26 knight takes e4. Thinking that his queen's under attack on e5, White overlooked it after knight takes e4. You take the queen on e5. Knight f2 is it wins the rook and gives a check. And once that check comes in, you lose your queen. So a very nice yeah. finish there so for Wooja Spolman. Boris did miss a couple of combinations like you just pointed out. I do think it's helpful in positions like these where we're showing what they did wrong, maybe to also suggest what White could have done instead. Um, yeah. So maybe on move 19, after bishop e7 white blundered with f5 we can suggest something that white could have done instead because a lot of the times you get these really good positions but it's not that easy to keep a winning position as it is even to get a winning position and we see that a lot you're when you're playing higher rated players you're absolutely right and actually just i would honestly play knight back to c3 i didn't 94 was a good looking move but it came mm -hmm. with a misguided plan with f5 thinking you could try to go for f6 or something like that but knight back to c3 is the way I would do it. This knight on d5 is very good. I would just simply challenge this knight on the d5 square and say, if you take me on c3, I take back with my pawn. You're improving my pawn structure uh, towards the center. My d4 pawn is well defended. Now I can go f5 and start an attack. Here's the ambulance crying for um, Marcoya's mistakes, but we'll go on to a different game as the ambulance yep. runs on by. There we go. There we go. And yeah, I like that you were bold enough to just say, if I was here and I made a mistake bringing the knight to e4, all right, loss of tempo, cutting my losses, moving back, and yeah. just improving the position from there. And that's something that everybody can do in their own games as well, especially in rapid games if you realize you just miscalculated something. For sure. And I'm being told that's Wouter, like loud, the OU is like the Wouter. O yeah, Wouter Spolman. So there I'll, I'll work on that. I just pulled up this game between uh, Yuri Borisek. Boris, Boris Czech? Boris Czech? Boris Czech, there you go. And Ilias Vanderland. Okay, this I probably butchered that, so sorry. This is a very interesting endgame here where white has bishop and pawn versus rook and pawn. And the way I would evaluate this position is I'm thinking the rook e6 check is a nice move because the king couldn't mm -hmm. go to d-file, otherwise there would have been a check winning the bishop. 
But with this king so far off on f3, now I can sacrifice my rook for the bishop and pawn, and the king is too far away, so he, he just did that. We'll see yep. if this actually is played out or if white just resigns. And the reason why this is winning is because, importantly, you know, our, my pawn is on b7, which means I can always waste the tempo, quote-unquote, to play b6 if I need to before playing b5. But more to the point, once we trade on a5, my king is very quick, and I'll just let it play out. And, you know, if anything happens, I can discuss it, but you'll see exactly what I was going to say be played out here. here too. Yep. So, and yeah. an, a good technique to remember here is if you ever get your king to be third rank in positions like this, it doesn't matter whose move it is. Once your pawn gets right behind the king, you're always winning these positions. Yes. So it's a lot easier for black to just calculate, okay, if my king is in front of my pawn and I can get to the third rank, I'm winning. So let's just get my king there and deal with the pawn catching up after. Absolutely. I don't even know what Black's thinking about here because what you said, he, of course, knows. It's like b4, king mm -hmm. b3, king a3. So king a1, b3, king b1, b2, king c2, king a2, and I get a queen. Right? It's a very yep. forcing line. So this is all... Uh, oh, the pawn just was landed on b2, so that was a weird thing that when I refreshed the board, but okay, the... Uh, and King's on a1, and he still hasn't moved yet. Also, uh, so MVL drew really quickly against MVL. board four of the gnomes. That just whoa. remember, didn't you say he was on your fantasy team, uh, Mr. Hess? Um, yeah, and am I gonna regret it? Like, how did MVL just make a draw so quickly? What's wrong with you, buddy? Hi, Chesbe. Good to see you, ghostly Bota. So, you know, I am just so radiant, I look pale. <laughs> HS Bay. So how did MVL not win for my fantasy team? Okay, they played a very forcing line in the Grunfeld. And so at this level, they've, they know a ton of theory. And so all of this has been played plenty of times before. And currently in the position I have after move 17 for black, white is up a pawn, but this D4 pawn is very vulnerable. So after the trades, he gave up his D4 pawn back and they simply agreed to make a quick draw here because it's a rook end game with rook and four against rook and four. So this is called, I'm playing with the white pieces simply to make a draw, and Maxime is saying, well, what am I supposed to do here? If my opponent <laughs> wants to force a draw, nothing I can do about it. So sorry, MVL, and sorry to my fantasy team. But um, how about this game between Raphael, that is Mate Shebenik, and Liam Vrolik? Okay. Uh, because that game has 13 seconds, 15 seconds out for black, and it's knight and four versus knight and four, where black has this a pawn. So that a pawn is very far advanced, which is a nice decoy in a position like this, because the knight is stuck defending against this pawn. Here comes the king. But as soon as you go the king to the queen side, you lose all of the defense of the king side. So we'll see how Shevnik continues here. And I, I love his winning chances in this position. Right, because either his king has to abandon the queen side and lose or he has to play without a knight on the king side yeah exactly right the knight is stuck uh defending the past pawn so it's pretty much like black is up a knight on the king side where most of the action is taking place yep um sorry just sending a quick message to the chess.com team but yeah this is going to be very instructive and i think if the king can get an opposition situation where yeah, king e5 was played i didn't didn't love that move i, I didn't think that was uh, necessary yet but the point is that if we get some sort of position where uh, white has to make a move it's very difficult with this knight stuck protecting against this past pawn so here let's say king to d3 was just played i would just mm -hmm. i think i'd go back king f5 he does and go knight to e5 uh or maybe even so knight d6 so you, you need to poke a hole so maybe g5 excuse me g5 g4 and that way i can get my king to h3 no, they drew, you can't make a draw by repetition here. Black has no risk whatsoever. Like, what I was trying to say, yeah. Alexandra, is like, after king f5, king e3, I move 45. Play something like g5. And I need to keep one pawn on the board and mm -hmm. try to go g4 myself and get my king into g4 and start slowly making progress on the king side. That's really the right. Way. And that's a much easier choice over just repeating the position as well, right? Because he has no no risk. None. None whatsoever. Yeah. Even if you So at least change the pawn structure so you don't repeat it. We understand that he had seven seconds. So that would have been a way that he could have continued playing without worrying about his clock. 
Yep. And I mean, I just like I put this move g5 on the board. If you go h3 to stop me from going g4, now I can even play h5 with the idea of playing h4 and giving the black king the f4 square to infiltrate from. That's what you need is a point of infiltration. And by playing, you know, repeating moves, you don't even give yourself a chance to win. So that's just something instructive for everyone watching, an, uh, an opportunity of trying to win a position like this. Maybe even instead of h5, just moving the king to e5 and then knight d6 to f5 with check, you create a new target on g3. But all right, let's go to a different game because uh, there's so much yeah. action underway. I was looking at the game between Dr. Burger Burger and D. Forsen, not just because I love saying the username. Um, White is in a lot of trouble, but the position is kind of interesting. Oh, for sure. And Burger Burger, I believe I picked him for my fantasy team as well. So, of course, he's going to lose this game. Uh, it seems yeah, to be it's a trend. the commentator's curse, Robert. It's not your fault. <sighs> but, I, you know, I'm really blaming myself here. I need to I need to breathe. Maybe what you should do is pick your fantasy team and then pick anyone except those people. <laughs> <laughs> I see I see what you did there. Um, yeah. This, this material imbalance is known as Lasker Compensation. White has a rook, a knight. Fancy and, term, Robert. I mean, it's what it's called. Rook, minor piece, and pawn for a queen, which is technically, like, if you count point value, it's even. But this position is about king safety, right? The king on g1 doesn't feel very at home here with the queen and bishop sort of barreling down. Um, right. I don't even know what to do. I guess king h2 is the move I'd play here, saying if you take my knight on f1, I take back with my a rook and now all of a sudden i'm getting a counter attack along the f file mm -hmm. and importantly i'm protecting this g3 pawn so you went rook right. a1 a2 which also protects the g pawn it doesn't look like it but if you take on f1 and i take say with my king then you take on g3 you get pinned right the rook g2 will come pinning your queen to the king on the g file yes an offensive way of defending i guess a big issue here is that when you are playing with minor pieces versus a queen, one of the most important things to keep in mind is your pieces need to be well coordinated in that they're close enough, they're protecting each other. Um, and White is struggling here because he is just so busy trying to defend his king side that doesn't have enough moves to bring his bishop and his rook close enough quickly and try to get any type of counter attack. Yeah. And especially because this rook a2 move allowed black to infiltrate on the first rank, right? Rook to b1 yep. can come at any moment. And rook f8 is just a check, no more than that. I always have the g7 square to run to, whereas rook b1 puts immediate pressure on this pin knight on uh, f1. I really do not like white's position. I think rook b1 now is good, and that's what goes to show. Rook a2 didn't really have a clear purpose to me. I would have went king h2, and probably king h2, white was worried about queen h5 with discovered checks. But then I would just move my king back to g1. Sometimes we have to move our pieces back. We talked about in the other game with um, Mark Koya that knight back to c3 was a move that looked interesting. Here, king g1, king, uh, king h2 then back to g1 makes sense. So the queen has moved from g5 to h5 in the process. Yep, I'm looking at what you just showed on the board. I think you highlighted the position very well. So maybe we can take a look at another game and see this one play out. Okay. Because the game between Baby Legs and per Peruncio or Eric Braun and Alejandro Diaz is also nearing the end. And it's an interesting end game Whoa. because both of the kings are pretty exposed. Isn't, is Black up a piece? I was like, wow, this position looks really interesting. And then I did a material count and Black's up a, a piece, isn't he? Uh, in this position, he's up a piece yes for <laughs> for a couple pawns yeah no I, for two pawns okay two pawns okay gotcha i was like I mean, yeah. material counting is hard for me because sometimes i just start talking about the position and then i'm like wait a second this seems to be a problem here because there's a piece missing and yeah right now white is right. down a, a minor piece for two pawns but unfortunately for white it doesn't look like the pawns are going to be enough here as my the black king is not in too much danger at the moment so uh, as long as I don't, I can play queen c7 here just to get my queen out of harm's way. Of course, uh, black cannot take on b5 because knight d6 check threatens the fork. And if you take my knight, then I win your queen on b5. So be careful not to just think you're taking free pawns. And that's why queen c7 was played. Now f5. Yep. I like what Alejandro is trying to do here because, like we said, he has a worse position. So... F5 is helping open up 
open up the center here. At least he's going to have some hopes and dreams of getting some type of counterplay. Otherwise, he's just going to lose. So he might as well try something, even if it's not the most sound idea. But there's a possibility that Black might make a mistake. No, completely agreed with that logic and that strategy. But I don't see how Black makes a mistake here after Queen F4. G4 is hanging with check. What is C4? Um, well, that's because Robo Hess doesn't make mistakes. So <laughs> it's hard to understand this human concept of mistakes. It's very foreign, you know? I make mistakes. I am human. Yeah, Queen takes G4 check was a free pawn. Now, any move. Knight to F4 is good. Knight to, yeah. knight to E3 is good. And and DG Road is does have a point. I liked Alejandro Diaz, and I picked him. He's He's not winning here, but he's also playing the top board. So he can still be a strong board four, even if he doesn't win this first game. Absolutely. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> BJH, Aaron, please make us a RoboCop Hess image. Yes, oh, please. No. Oh, no. That's a great suggestion. Oh, no. Leave me alone. Wait, this burger game, by the way, has gotten interesting once again. Like, it looked, okay. it looked like it was going to be back. completely over, but the material imbalance still exists. Black just made his move pawn to H6. And I think the reason why this move pawn h6 was played and is actually exactly because why he's playing rook f6 check. So if instead queen takes e4, I think black was afraid of rook f6 check, king g7, then something like g5 with bishop f8 check and trying to deliver some kind of back rank checkmates. So instead, uh, h6 was played, rook f6 check, king g7, now rook to e6 is the follow-up, but the king feels a lot safer as there's no, not you're not forcing it to the back rank. Yep. What would you give White's chances of surviving? If, if you were Kocheva, a betting website, what odds would you put for White here? Not very much. Like a, one to ten. Ten percent seems generous for. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, I know it's a blitz game, so anything can happen. But I think Black is like a ninety-three percent chance of winning this game. Okay, okay. It's it's always fun to to make players predict things like that. I take it back. Um, no, you're you're actually going to be right. This game is not going to end in a black win. You made me say it, and I immediately looked at the position again. Like I turned away for half a second to type a message to the chess.com team, turned back, and I'm like, okay, this looks actually. I mean, White just just improved his position a lot here. His his pieces, his bishop. Rook and pawn are very coordinated there. C5 looks a little bit tricky, but white can play rook f5 here. Wait, um, can I? Oh. Yeah, can I check and then? Okay, not not great. No, it's it's still like bishop e5 is just to blockade the check, and it's not super clear. I didn't like, you know, just the move that I didn't like just a second ago was I thought instead of bishop to d4, I should have played rook to f5, just defend the bishop by with the rook f5 and play something more stabilizing instead. He allowed this c5 move, and still, what has good chances to hold here? Gosh, my tune changed so quickly. Oh, man, we would have made so much. Actually, the game is not over yet, but I should have taken those betting odds. Yeah, you, I mean, I just, I said in a random number, 93%, and I'm I know, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I put you on the spot there just to to make things interesting at your, at your peril. Um, yeah. But again, this is still very hard for white to defend he has 30 seconds left on the clock in the minor piece endgame versus the queen he has to be careful to not blunder any type of uh check forking two of his pieces here or just dropping even one more pawn on a5 would give black an extra pass pawn and then it'd just be way too hard to defend so Ooh, the, he really has to be careful of every single I hate that move, C4, by the way. This is terrible, because now the rook can protect A5. Yep, the rook protects A5. The bishop can sit on D4 at any moment. Yeah. No, that was a really, really bad decision, in my opinion. In instead of creating weaknesses, he's helping white defend his own pieces. Yeah, that's that was not the move there. I think you can even play G5 here, or, or there's probably even something better, but yeah. Rook F6, actually, Ooh. comes after the A6 pawn. So that <laughs> white can turn this around and even win this game. You have to be very careful with the black pieces. Just like, yeah, rook f6 was not, certainly an option there, but if you try too yeah. hard to win this position, you end up losing. Right. Um, no, I liked rook f6 a lot better because at least he can try to grab a pawn back either on h6 or on a6 after yep. queen takes g4 check. Yep. Um, 
okay, he's checking him. Makes sense, 13 seconds, he's trying to gain some time here. But he's also helping the Black King get closer to his pawn. So this may have been a mistake because once the king gets to b5, he's both protecting a6 and putting pressure on white's pawn. Yep. So I think he just made a wrong plan trying to gain time with a perpetual and actually improving his opponent's position. Oh, for sure. And now the king, uh, the king rook bishop combination is pretty awkward on the side of the board because the bishop's pinned. He's going to have a harder time protecting the c3 pawn. And yeah, I think the c3, well, c3 pawn is lost now. Once that pawn is lost, you're going to, wait, queen e4 check wins the rook. Bam. Remember when I said you got to be careful about getting your pieces checked in these end games? Yep. It happens to top players as well, chat. Um, yeah, so don't feel and bad. that's re one of the difficult parts of trying to play minor pieces versus a queen in any type of time pressure. It's just very stressful. I'm with you. Totally with you. So the 93% chance turned into a 100% victory. I win. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, uh, but that was a topsy-turvy position. It was topsy turvy. I like books are nice's comment. Ten percent is generous, and then four moves later. <laughs> I mean, I think Hess is very accurate at understanding the positions, and then the players just do something we didn't expect because it's really hard to understand what it's like in their shoes, feeling this pressure and feeling the yep time and the team. Um, Alexandra, I just pulled up the game between Alexianko and uh, Drowin, Augustin Drowin, okay. and. It Alexianko is on the other side of an attack now. In the first game, Maze was trying desperately to mate him. In this game, it looks like he's a very straightforward attack and is just going to checkmate his opponent very shortly. Seems like the ideal way of winning a game. Right, like h takes g6, queen h6 check is something that is going to hurt. Like, hurt a lot. I wish. Yeah. I, I wish this is... there was something valuable I could say here, but like, it just feels awful. Is there a defense? Like what, what? I'm, I'm trying to see if there's anything black can do here. Um, can, I mean, can I take this pawn on g6? And you have to take back with the, take with the h pawn, you get checkmated immediately. Right. That's so you have to take with the f pawn for sure. And then I have to take then with the f pawn. Queen h6 right away. Yeah, that looks real good. King f7. And then mm -hmm. where's my follow up? Do I go g4, g5, and just kick your knight away? I must have something good here. Like G4, black has to protect the H pawn with his rook on H8 since his knight is going to kick off. F4, get I mean, off. every move looks good for white. Just F4 running E5 or even yeah. running F5. It just, it's, it's not a good position to be in. So Alexanko has some choices here. He's not even, he hasn't moved yet. But I would play H takes G6 and just, even honestly, this is funny, but knight D to E2 wins the D6 pawn, probably. So it's like, if I don't even have to admit you, and I can just play knight dd2 and right. d6, your position is really bad. Well, Alex Seiko is not down any material, which, like we've seen in a lot of games, happens often when you're trying to get an attack. But he didn't even have to sack to get this attack, so there doesn't necessarily have to be a crushing blow that checkmates his opponent. Yep. He can just get a much better position, get a couple pawns, and convert to an easy endgame. So... When you have an attack like this, you don't necessarily have to puzzle rush. You can also just get an advantage and slowly crush your opponent. It's a very satisfying way to win also. And it's, yeah, this is what he just did. Because you're queen f4 yeah. with a threat of h6 check trying to win the knight. So it looks like you're walking right. into a fork with e5. But then it's a force checkmate for white. h6 check. King moves back. Queen takes f6. And I mate you on g7. So Oh, this is very nice. Yeah, very deliberate move, queen to f4. And if you take on h5 with the knight... Um, well, I think I can even just move my queen away somewhere. There, there could be tactics. Oh, yes, there are tactics. Knight of five check is very good. Because if you take with the G pawn, you lose your knight. And then once you lose that knight, I'm going to go checkmate you on the king side. If you take with the E pawn, I still take your knight. And this is a known sort of checkmate pattern. Queen G5 check, king H8, queen F6 check, king G8, and I go knight to D5. And I threaten knight E7 with check and mate your king is stuck here doesn't have any squares to go to i guess there are puzzle rush opportunities here as well um, yeah this is this feels not good i mean black can try and desperately hang on to his life here queen d8 just so he doesn't have to play into any of this but then i'm guessing you could just take on g6 open up the h file and 
H. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Queen D8 is actually, oh, Knight G8 similarly, like, your best Ooh. sort of try. But, yeah, I don't see you, I mean, Knight F5 check still probably works, maybe? I have to think about it a little more. But there's, like, going to be some Knight sacrifices. Rook takes D6 can be a follow-up. I just, I'm not really feeling yeah. Black's position here. You know what this position reminds me of? What? I don't know if you've ever watched spider videos on YouTube, but whenever they catch their prey and the, the prey is caught in the net and is struggling and at a moment like one of their legs slips out and it thinks it might have a chance to hold on to its dear life, but then the spider just locks on over and uh, that was a little more gruesome than I was going for. <laughs> what's happening here? You're talking about spiders and I'm ignoring you because I mean, I'm not afraid of spiders, but nobody really likes spiders. Actually, Spiders do kind of protect you from other bugs, so you gotta appreciate spiders, and not just because Spider-Man exists. Yeah, yeah. Hess is like, I don't want to talk about spiders. Please change the subject, okay? But then, I'm, <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, they're actually pretty useful. They uh, they come to your rescue. So, yeah. yeah, they're well, they're an undervalued um, insect. Exactly, and uh, Alex Cinco is being the spider for his team there, coming to their rescue, getting the wins. Yeah. Okay, no more horror stories. I'm sorry, chat. Let's yeah. move on. Yeah, so we'll, we'll look at more horrible positions, perhaps, but no more horror stories. We'll keep it all, yes. all on the board from now exactly. on. Exactly, exactly. So where do we go? Like, there's a bunch of games going on. I don't know where to take us. Ooh, the game between um, Jules Musard and... Grandmaster Johan and it just finished. But this is a good game to see, I guess, because Jules just beat the Norway Gnomes. Oh, nice. Um, and a nice. They're really close in rating, so I'm, I was almost not sure who was playing on which board. But <laughs> yeah, we, we missed the final blow there. Yeah, that's a really nice way to end the game because Queen E4 is annoying with Knight D4 being a threat. This is a pinned rook. But instead of having to move the rook, you play c7, opening up the bishop on the queen. And after queen takes b7, he won that rook on e7. And very importantly, knight d4 looks like a nice resource trying to you know, take use of the, make use of this pinned uh, rook here. But first of all, queen f7 check is winning, but queen d8 check followed by queen takes knight is also very simple um, to win this game. So. Yep. Okay. that's well, a, It was a nice finish. Yep, I agree. And... I see, if we stay in this match a little bit, I see, uh, where's, I just saw. I was looking game. at. Where'd MVL just go? He's gone. He didn't draw again, did he? Um, oh, it's still the first round. Got it. I right. Like, oh. It's a very, it's a very drawn looking position actually between um, Grandmaster Archers and CM Mark. Okay. So maybe we can take a look at that just because there's such a, huge rating gap almost 500 points and it seems like white should be holding i know you don't like when we say end games are even or it looks dryish yep um, maybe level is the word i should be using here again since black actually does have some interesting ideas but it'd be nice to see if white can try to hold this although i don't like what's happening well you don't like the black king going to f4 for example yeah yeah this just got a lot worse and now the black rook could have also came to c2 there's a good way for white to lose this game playing king g3 h4 mm -hmm. check king h2 g3 check king h3 rook c1 and i made you on h1 so that's a good way not to play if you are trying to figure out ways to defend an end game like this oh it's like refresh button going crazy taking us back in the the position here but okay we have king f4 played and rook f8 i like right. this defensive uh, method here yep rook this f5, was great perfect. um he was able to maneuver his rook around and now he's going to be able to grab back a pawn white black can take on f3 because if g takes f3 and the rook takes either pawn then black gets f3 back yeah but i, I always like seeing the lower rated player have to fight to get any type of result that is considered an upset. So if he can draw this, that's a very good result for him, even though MVL also drew the fourth board. So yeah, but they're already up two and a half half in this match. And this would be three to one with this draw. And there's just no way for white to lose this game. I don't want to jinx him. But yeah, there's somehow he's, you know, can find a way to lose, but with this King on G three, okay. H four is a nice attempt, but yeah. Rook takes G two pawn takes G four. And both sides have a rook and a pass pawn. So play rook f8, play g5, etc. You can then sacrifice your rook for that black pawn at the end of it. So it's a very yeah. easy draw to make for Mark 
Andrea Marizzi. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to quickly say before it gets irrelevant because it's too far off, but the end game, the checkmating pattern you showed before, Real Greco in chat said, how many times have I been mated like that? Too many. That's pretty funny. Um, it happens to everybody, but it's always nice to point out those mates. So hopefully you will see them in the future or maybe even be on the giving end of that mate. Yep, definitely. Hi, Face Chess. Good to see you in chat. Welcome back. Face Chess. Exciting yeah. to shout out only you. So that yeah. hurts. True oh, hurts. no, I think it's for both of us. But he was he, he caught his first stream with us uh last time we were doing commentary and face chess is back so that's great to see yep yep okay so he's gonna hold Woo! yeah this is gonna just sacrifice the rook the king's way far away you just move your king and try to get oop my arrows aren't working so king h7 mm -hmm. rook check on h2 go to g6 don't go back to g8 right because if you go back to g8 then black can bring his king over because there's no way to promote all right, so the fourth board's holding down. Yeah, this, and this is an even bigger one because Marseille stacks the top of their lineup, right? They have a mm -hmm. 2,800, near, nearly 2,800 player on board one, and a 2,058, whereas Norway's board four was nearly 2,400. So it's even right. a much greater upset when a 2,100 player makes a draw against a strong grandmaster like Archer's Nixons. That's fair, but can't you say the same thing, that MVL should have been expected to win because they stacked him? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, but his opponent forced the draw. It wasn't really his fault. It wasn't his fault. I love oh, Maxime. You know, I can't blame him. Yeah, I know you love him. I won't make you. I won't force you to say anything like that. We could just move on. Yeah, I'm gonna move on to first fighter is now making you say something like this. I feel terrible. I, All right. I moved on to Sebastian Mazet's game against Georg Meyer because Georg is going down. He's down in exchange right now, and his opponent has a passed a pawn. Not good news for the Baden Baden snowball fans. Nope. And after the really nice win we saw from Georg in the first game, yep, you got to be rooting for an artist after you see such a brilliancy. You just want more. Yeah, but I feel like this is more the type of art that is just you know, let's see who like like a Pollock. You know, he's... not appreciated in his time or after his time. Well, I think that Maze is more like a Pollock. You know, sometimes he splats it on the canvas and it works out, and other times it doesn't. Here, he's up in exchange and a pass pawn. I'm it's working out. Here. Yeah. Modern art, if you will. Oh no! Don't don't get me into modern. Okay. Art. We don't we don't have want to have this discussion on, on air today because then we'll be fully distracted. Sports, modern art, you just you know. Easy, and and easy Hess is up. just going to get his own talk show on PCL. Exactly. It's the uh, Hess podcast that has nothing to do with chess. But exactly. I would watch that though. But anyway, okay. So Rook D one, preparing Rook A one. Seems like Georg is giving one last check trying to hope for the best, but after King G8. Yeah, you can probably sure. make any move on the board and be okay here. <laughs> Actually, don't play Bishop E7, Bishop C5, and get a queen. Because that's a rook takes E7 check, your king can't escape. That's a good way not to win this game. So watch out for that. That's an interesting tactic. Find the worst move for black. And it's also, it's a worst move, and it's a logical move. Because the king comes to F8, I simply give a check. And then mm -hmm. I go back. Your king like can't escape my checks along the e7, e8 squares. But instead, king to e6 was played, and Georg Meyer resigned. Modern cast. We want more Hess. Hess cast. Your fans have spoken. Uh, we should put it in the suggestion box for your future streams. Good to see Danny Wrench in the chat as well. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably missing doing commentary with you, so I am lucky to have his spot. <laughs> it's not his spot. We've been doing commentary together this whole season. You know, he'd be lucky to uh, be able to be in your spot, and I'm just, you know, nobody's taking my spot. It's, uh, it's our show. I'm being protective, very protective. I, I liked it. I liked it. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, there's another game that, ah, for some site, for. A little bit it looked like there was more time on the board but i was looking at the game between maxime lagarde mm -hmm. and I, I beat, ina agress it looks you like you a puzzle rush you beat me there okay yeah. good i mean great minds think alike this time yeah i mean knight f6 check is clearly coming rook g4 check is actually oh there's a queen on d1 but yeah then i would have knight f6 checks winning anyway so right it looks like black is out of options here with this knight coming to f6 with a devastating check and right. the rook on h5 is hanging and everything looks I, I don't know how Maxime got 
down got down in exchange i'm curious if he sacrificed it for this attack um uh let's see that's probably what happened yeah he's he um well he sacrificed to control all the dark squares so i saw a bishop wow. took on a1 and he just had dark square dominance yeah this actually i've gotten this question pretty often on stream if you go back to move 13 and people ask is there ever a time where you don't want to get the exchange or it's not advantageous yep. and i think this position is really instructive because um, the, the bishop is so overpowered in this position and the dark squares are really important. It's kind of the glue to her position yep. that it's actually not worth taking on a1. I would say the position right there is a great example of that where you shouldn't have taken mm -hmm. on a1. Play a move like queen to d6 and just use your uh, space advantage. And maybe you could take on a1 later, but it's nice to kick the knight out of c5 before it gets cemented there because in the game, um, when you took, the, the knight couldn't leave after queen to c3. You don't have another piece to kick away this knight. So right. just get into the live position real quick. So mm -hmm. And thank you, Face Chess, for gifting five subs to the chess.com chat. I'm just going to read them really quick because it's super nice of Face Chess to support uh, chess events like this. So thank you, Face Chess. Yodelmeister, Discordia Adams, Literature, I'm not going to read it out, Corpse 888, and Enchanted 47. Yeah, no, thank you, there thank you. And I just want to pull up the schedule here real quick. Just remind everybody that while this is Valentine's Day, it's your Thursday stream here, that there will be more action next week on the 19th and 21st, the Battle Royales, which is a round-robin format where all seven you play seven people. So there are eight teams in each Battle Royale. You play all other seven teams, and you play only the board that you're on. I think I have um, the slide here. So here's the format generally, five continents, Teams from all around the world, 32 teams total, 15 minutes with a two-second increment. That's what you're watching. But in the Battle Royale, it's all board ones, play all board ones, board two, board two, three, three, four, four, and that is 10 minutes with a two-second increment. So, yep. But so back to this us. next next week we're going to be back to the Battle Royale format. Um, yeah, I heard it's the, the new Battle Royale game, not Apex, but the Pro Chess League next week, so be sure to tune in. Absolutely. Ooh, I'm looking at the game between Jordan Van Flores and uh, Boris Mallorca. Sorry. Mallorca? Mallorca. Yeah, you're, you're, that's wishful thinking. Mallorca. Marcoya. Yeah, let's go, to, let's go to Mallorca. Is it vacation time yet? I'm there. Uh, right, I would like to. Um, Whoa, look at that last move. Yeah, that, that's why I'm here. Rook f3 is such a cute move, just doubling his rooks. <laughs> Boris can't take because his queen is pinned. And also, what a nice control he has on the queen side with a5 and b5, even though he has a double pawn. I didn't even notice it. Yeah, that was a really sweet move. And, I, and now is a very important question, Alexandra. Like, do I take on c8 or do I move my rook somewhere else? So let's say I go queen d2 check. You move your yep. king to g7, and then if I move like rook to c5, that way I can keep control over the c file. I don't want to necessarily trade on c8 to give black an easier access to the file, as I already have two rooks there. I played rook c5 immediately, and I guess the point is if you take on c5, I'll throw in queen d2 check first, because if rook c5, right. rook c5, then queen takes a5, you steal a pawn, uh, which is still probably good for white. But I would play queen d2 check, and that way when the king moves, then I can take on c5 and say, oh, I'll play b4 next and start expanding over there on the king side. Actually, right. on the queen side, pardon. And one of the points you're saying here is that white should continue expanding on the uh, queen side here. You said, you mentioned before, black's king is also pretty weak on the king side. Do you think that white might be able to take advantage of it later on in the game? Yeah, like with a move like f3 or something? Right. Absolutely, because f3, you take on f3, then I can take with my bishop even, so just to put some arrows mm -hmm. in the board. Eh, wrong arrow. Bishop takes, then your h5 pawn is a target as well. So uh, I wouldn't say you don't have to do that, and I wouldn't play it too quickly, but at some point you're definitely going to consider it. Now look at this rook on c6. Yeah. Here's a good yeah. example of not having to move your rook, because if you take me on c6 and I get b takes c6, I have a very happy pass pawn. Bishop Are takes you g4. Saying this is yet another example where the exchange is not ideal. I, that is sort of what I'm saying. And I think bishop takes g4 might be a tactic that white is considering here. There we go. Just saying, all right, bishop g4. And if you take on g4 with the pawn, queen takes g4 check, and there goes your rook on c8. And if you don't take my bishop on g4, I don't 
I'm not positive what you're going to do because if you take on c6 with your bishop, I can take your rook on c8 with my bishop, and right. that trade benefits white as there's going to be some problems on the king side for black. Yep. This looks just crushing for Jordan. Um, well, you know, maybe Boris can just take some vacation in Mallorca, as I had originally tried to say. <laughs> game. He definitely needs it. He's not feeling good in his position right now. Yeah, and he's the one who blundered that pawn on d4 in the first game that we looked at. I remember, yeah. So maybe he needs to take that vacation. Much needed. <laughs> And venues, I'm a simple man. When I see an exchange, I take. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I found that so funny. Oh, he, um, he retreated his rook. I I mean, I didn't like that, but someone was asking, Tayyip was asking, what about rook takes c6 after bishop g4? problem with rook takes c6 is that I can just take the rook back, and now when you take my bishop and I take back here, well, I have an advanced c-pawn. I think black is clearly you know, fighting here and may even objectively be better but in a blitz game especially, it's hard to have your king feeling weak and a pass pawn on the other side of the board. But I agree that rook takes e6 is the better option. So rook... Right. So in the game, black is... Honestly, Boris doesn't need that vacation anymore. He's going to force Jordan yeah. to take a vacation because... Did Jordan just really misplayed this position? Yeah. When we first tuned in, it looked really nice for white. Now, all of a sudden, black has firm control over the C file. And right. the problem with double pawns is showing itself. You can't create a passed mm -hmm. pawn. You have yep. these double pawns here. So black will not take on a5. That would be a huge mistake. If you take on a5 and allow b takes a5 back, then all of a sudden, I can play b6 and create a passer. But if white ever mm -hmm. takes on b6, I take back on b6, and my one pawn blockades your two. That's not good for white. Yep, that's a great explanation of the pawn structure here. And the other interesting point is that before, White had his rook on c6 trying to block it up. But now, Boris can put his rook on c3. And all of a sudden, he has control of the open file. Yep. And he's the one fighting for the with the pass pawn on d4. OK, queen c7 also makes sense because it's stopping White from putting any piece on c1. Yep. And also make sure that the rook can't go to a7 with check which, you know, something you have to look out for. But I like what Jordan's doing. His position is still worse, but it's a good opportunity to try to maybe play queen a1 next and then try to mm -hmm. go for rook a7. You need some kind of counterattack because uh, structurally, you're pretty much lost here. If the queens were traded right. and that black king, say, was on b7, I mean, white can pretty much resign. And what black has a passed pawn that's actually useful now, whereas white has no passed pawn to speak of. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I guess one thing black can try to do if white ever tries to play something like queen a1 is play queen d6 and put pressure on b4. Mm -hmm. At the same time, though, black wouldn't want to trade his b6 pawn for a doubled b4 pawn. So right. that's yeah. a good way for white's pass doubled pawns to actually be somewhat advantageous in that it doesn't matter if you take one of them. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you could feel free to take that because the b6 pawn yeah. gives white the pass pawn and the six rank for counterattacking chances. So Jordan is trying to sit on the position. If I'm uh, Boris, I'm playing a move like queen d8 or queen d6. I'm playing rook c3. I need to get a little bit more activity. And so he played queen d6. And now, wait a second. No, maybe not. I was, I was thinking, can I push my f pawn? But, yep, that's the natural move to look at here because obviously white is a little bit worse, but if he could open up the kingside position in the proper way, maybe he has some type of attack. Yeah. Especially with his rook on a6 because he could jump to a7 and help. But I don't think f3 or f4 is good here. Yeah, it looks, it looks too... Because f3 and f4, black just doesn't have to take either pawn push. Right. And definitely don't play e takes f4 because e5 comes with check and you lose your queen on d6. So, okay, but he's trying anyways. Yep. So don't take on f4. Mm -mm. Don't do that. Don't be like me. Don't blunder your queen. But f4 is at least a nice try because... Oh, he took it. That surprised me a bit. Isn't that what we were just not... Okay, maybe it's not so bad, but I don't like the idea of opening up his the G file while the seventh rank is also open for the rook. Yeah, I'm with you there because, I mean, black is still doing very well. And actually now queen to C1 with queen F4 check is going to be tempting. Uh, the, the white king's not exactly in a good place either. 
but mm -hmm. I could see White at some point re playing Rook to A1, which simultaneous. Okay, and there goes the Rook to A1. Rook G1 yep. can be the Rook can be swung to the King side, but also it still has access to the A7 score. So it's a very good Rook, whereas Black's is not quite active yet, despite having the great uh, pawn structure here. Right, and Boris is also getting close to two minutes on the clock here, so I think any position like this where you're slightly better and you're getting low on time maybe try to not open it up for sharp counterplay where you have to be very precise with your moves otherwise you're at risk of getting an attack because yep. you're gonna have to spend a lot more time thinking yep so queen c3 so um boris has no fear he's saying that you know rook g1 mm -hmm. check okay that's one check my king can just run away and actually after rook g1 check the king can successfully run because if i go to say f7 my king can then go to e7, and you know you can try to mate me on the g file, but I, at the end of the day, I always can block with bishop f7. Your bishop on d3 is a really bad piece. Right. So what should Jordan do here? Okay, he just played rook a7 again here. Um, maybe he's okay. The good response, just to protect yourself. Yep. And is queen g2 a good idea here? No, because maybe he's not protecting the bishop anymore. Wait, don't tell me that Boris is about to make a draw. No, he's just gaining time. He's going to fight here. He has to fight because he's much better. Yeah. Um, Ljubljana Turtles, one and a half to three and a half, so his team could definitely use a good result here. Yeah, they really need it because... I, I like how Jordan is the one who plays rook a6. <laughs> Stopping the perpetual when he's worse, and we're telling Boris not to play for a draw. Okay. Either he's playing for a win, or he realized that the repetition was going to happen anyway, so his rook might as well be on a6. But this looks interesting now because maybe the queen can just. Where's my queen go to? I have no really no really good to go. Queen g2 check. The king just runs away to f7. Maybe White just has to play really passive moves here not try to get an attack but just try to hold the position yeah i think white's in uh, big trouble queen g2 king moves over isn't great because then he's helping the rook get to g8 on an open file that's not blocked by the king i'm not sure how white's going to try to hold this a rook takes b6 do we want to point out why that's not a good idea why rook takes b6 isn't good? Well, yeah, because looks like queen, queen yeah. f4 check. Yeah, queen f4 check looks pretty problematic for this king here. Because yep. after king to g2, you know, your king looks like it's okay for the time being, but mm -hmm. very shortly it's going to be mated. I think I can even play rook g8. Oh, I grabbed my queen back. So rook g8, just discovery. Hess and, puzzle rush time. Yeah, it's like you take my bishop on e6. If king f7, probably checkmating you, but also winning your rook if I need to. Right. Um, the king, you know, actually, I win the game immediately. But let's go back to the live position because he didn't make any moves. Because they just traded queens. Wait, why? Why would you do that? This is, like, the way not to win the game. We were doing tactics. Find the... I'm not going to say find the worst move here, but Black had the entire control. Yeah, He had an attack. Oh. He was calling all the shots, and he just traded queens. Maybe he thinks that he's going to be able to promote the D-pawn. But who's promoting first? Right? Rook takes b6 here. Just like I take that pawn, at some point you have to be super concerned about rook a7, bishop f5 check, and me. And that's you. exactly what's going to happen in the worst case. White has a perpetual, right? That's what it's starting to look like. But I would even consider taking on b6 and trying to promote my own pawn. Got it. So you're back to fighting for the win here as yeah. White. I think okay. well, also based on what's just happened and being the higher rated player, that Jordan should feel some. Con I mean, he's better here. I'm, I'm positive he's better because the b pawn is just rolling. The king on f7 is poorly placed. Rook c6, what a move. Or is that a bad move? Let me think about that. Uh, well, white's king is close enough to the d-pawn, so it shouldn't be so, an issue. But bishop f5? Can I take that? Like, bishop f5, e f5, rook c6, pawn c6, king e7. That was like a draw immediately. Mm -hmm. Because you'll be, my, our kings will both do the same thing. We'll, they'll stop the pawns, and uh, no progress will be made. So... Take, yep. take, 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 take. Yeah, 
we see exactly what I was talking about. So rook c6, I just I take it back. It was not a good move. But at first glance, it looked good. Now that I see what's happening, it's just immediately a draw. Yeah. Both sides are stuck. King b6, king c7, king e4, king d3. And black can never actually take the pawn on b5 because then the c pawn starts rolling. You know how chess.com has those new analyses at the end of the game where it tells you what happened? Yeah. This is not going to be like a solid game where both players played well and it ended in a draw. <laughs> I mean, both players had their chances and missed it and ended in a draw. Yeah, definitely. There was yeah. there an offer, a draw just offered and draw agreed. Yeah, that game okay. had plenty of mistakes uh, in it. So where to next? Where do we go from here? Let's check out some of the games that are getting in time pressure again since they're going to end soon. Okay. Um, maybe the game between Berger and Gargatagli. Okay, let's see. Where are you? This looking? one is pretty crazy looking. Where is Berger? And it was a French defense. Who would have guessed? I'm looking for that game. What The usernames are... Um, Sherman Trous and Dr. Berger Berger. Oh, there it is. Well, okay, a couple of pieces were just traded off. So but I will move back to, yeah, they took knight on, or so the rook on c1, and then knight d3 was played. So right now it's even material, but mm -hmm. white's king is much safer. Yep. Who would you prefer to be here, white or black? Obviously white here. Um, my king has no worries, while his king has an open c file and an open a file. Yeah. And when you have pieces like a queen and a rook, that's something you actually do have to be careful of. Yeah. Um, black can't take on h4 in the... Oh, sorry, I just went all the way back. Uh, black couldn't take the pawn on h4 on move 39 because of queen d6 check, which shows why those open files are so weak. Because queen d6 check, he's just going to get mated either way he moves his king. Yep, completely agreed. So no... Queen takes h4. It's a queen b6 was played, but the king is still weak for black. And even a move like just b5, protecting that pawn, the king on b8 will never find true shelter. So mm -hmm. you just want to keep the pressure going, sustain it. Look at black's time, 2 minutes and 25 seconds. So I would just sit on the position a little bit. I don't see anything forcing here. Queen to c3 or pawn to b5, something like that, and just continue to poke and prod. And actually something very important here, Alexandra, that I would say doesn't immediately come to mind is I have this H pawn on H4, and in yep. the end game, if I trade like the rooks and the queens, then I can go G4, H5, and create a yeah. flank pass pawn. That's that's a great thing to point out because a big part of middle game strategy, which you can kind of consider this, is what kind of end game am I going to get into? Because if you can figure out whether or not the end game is good for you, then it will influence your strategy, whether you're trying to exchange pieces or just going for the attack. Yep. And Berger did offer a draw here, which is a little funny. You don't offer a draw when you're lower on time, lower rated and in a worse position, but okay, okay. I would literally never take a draw in this position with the white piece. Yeah, why would you even waste those two seconds clicking it? Well, I don't know. If it takes you two seconds to offer a draw, you got other problems, right? Just, it's just right there. Come on, you're, you're a good bullet player. You know, it doesn't take That's you two true. seconds. That's true. Um, I guess it's just disrespect. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. The E4 played. Okay, so now Black is trying to go E3. I like defending the king by creating a counterattack. That seems like a wise thing to do. But where's the king going? If you go to B8, then aren't I somehow going to mate you after, like, queen H8 check? It's looking so risky here. The queen C6 played. Now, mm -hmm. now white plays queen E3, throwing queen F4 check, winning F7 stopping black from playing e3 to shatter the uh, king's side pawn structure. Rook c1 is also a threat, pinning the queen and winning it. So, oof. I don't see how he's going to defend against all of these threats for too long. Yeah. So he went king d7. Now queen f4 certainly comes to mind, hitting f7. Right, because if black plays f5 to try to protect his pawn, he's just weakening his position further. Absolutely. And actually, anytime I see him with like pawn to f5 coming, I think, can I play h5 to um, chisel away at the base of the pawn structure and try to take this f5 pawn? So queen d5, I think I'd play rook c5 here and try to kick this right. king. Right. There, there's no perpetual because queen d1, I mean, the king could go anywhere and it's fine, but also after king h2, there's just no more checks. Yeah. 
No, for sure. Black can't even hope for a perpetual. That's why he has to, you know, swallow his ego and offer a draw here <laughs> just to spark a little bit of hope in his life right now. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's a psychological ploy, right? You kind of bother your opponent by offering them a draw and then yeah and then they get annoyed and they're like oh i'm just so winning here grumble grumble yeah you're like i have to win and then you're not playing objective chess anymore so right he played f5 queen h6 immediately taking up your strategy of annoying this g6 pawn now, this is just so hard for black to defend i really feel like black is okay like objectively but practically i think white wins a position like this 80 percent of the time like it just okay can you break that down practically it's winning but white wins the position 80 percent of the time so objectively i think it's well i don't know about this rook f6 move that scares me uh h5 now we were talking about this before that looks like a good move but what i was saying was um objectively i think the position is probably okay for black but practically speaking it's just so difficult when your king's not feeling safe you don't have much time on the clock you're the one with the weaker pawn structure because your g6 pawn is easier to attack the f2 pawn is very hard to get to so um you know a move like h5 here comes to mind the rook the pawn is pinned to the rook and once i get rid of your g6 pawn your f5 pawn feels weak it just doesn't feel comfortable playing on the black side of this yep i totally agree uh i guess the the thing that was weird for me to hear in that is it's just so hard to see how black is going to defend this that would it even objectively be a draw or is it was it maybe lost but i guess if we put a, a computer or robo hess in black shoes he'd find a way to draw it no. and daniel danny is just joking at you saying you've never played a game of objective chess in your life oh my gosh commentator on commentator shade we did not think we'd see it today just you know it it, it hurts oh. it would hurt if i cared but it's, <gasps> it's danny wrench Sorry. talking so oh my gosh <laughs> okay i feel like i uh you stirred the pot a little bit there i stirred the pot i should have done that Yep. Okay. So queen d6. How to continue this play here? Rook c1, threatening queen c8 check. I mean, this it just all. I see so many options for white and so few for black. Rook c1 is looks pretty devastating. Just and black has 26 seconds left. Yeah, I think this this game is ready to be considered a loss. Just like. <laughs> Danny goes, Alexander just stepped into the fire. Uh-oh. I was just trying to... Ga game's about to end here. Queen G8 check. And has to get to another level. Okay, there we go. Queen G8 check. This is not um, good. Not good nope. at all. Rook moves, you take on G6. Qu Queen F7, Queen you C8. got mate on C8. Yeah, it's mate is... Oh, boy. There we go. Take that pawn. Just take the pawn on g6 and then bring your queen right back to g8. And five seconds for black. I mean, it's just hopeless at this point. Yeah. Okay. Some well, people fall in love in a hopeless place. Other just get checkmated and the game is going to be Valentine's through. Day. There you go. Yes. Hippo oh, we, we haven't checked on our, our homie MVL, but. Okay, should I go over there? Or should I let this game conclude? Because the guys. Are... Let's let this game conclude because he has time. He has 12 minutes. Johan has 47 seconds. Oh, there's a king on e5, king of the hill, winning, but losing in every other way. Rook, rook d6 check is going to win the Quick, queen. Quick, just change the format of the PCL. Yeah. Give the burger a chance. Give the burger a chance. And game over. So let's go to MVL. Ooh, I, I like feel like this. that'd be a great tagline for a fast food place. Give the burger a chance. Well, actually, I would. Well, it's a little desperate. Well, it's kind of, it's a little, yeah, a desperate burger joint, kind of like the the vet. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you like caught yourself. Like, I don't, I don't even know what you're gonna say, but you're like, I can't. Good. <laughs> oh. I like. Uh, Wait, that was vegetarian a vegetarian option. That was a really bad decision by Johann Solomon because when I, now White can put this king on g5 and play rook c7 check and go after this g6 pawn. When yep. the pawns were on h5 and g4 and f3, the king moving to g5 always hung the f3 pawn. So now there's no pawn hanging, which means that this end game is probably just lost. King g5, here it is, followed by rook c7 check, and this is going to be lights out very quickly. Yep. Um, and I guess, was there a more instructive point in this end game where maybe things seemed less clear? I guess in this kind of position where the pawn structure is equal, and black has a pass pawn. 
a lot of times you think of the past pawns as an advantage, but here it actually kept the black rook tied to the c-pawn, especially since white was attacking from behind the pawn, yep. and it gave white just extra time to break open on the king side where he had a pawn up, so a four on three majority, which is how you often see pass pawns being created. Yeah, and, and frankly, Solomon got scared. He was worried that, you know, there's a, the king is getting very active, but g4, you just can't take that pawn on move 39. h6, g4, is, I'll go over it after the game is over because it's about to be finished, mm -hmm. but you, you need the king to not be able to go to g5, and it can't go to g5 when the pawn f3 is hanging. But by taking right. on g4, now there's no weakness, no pawn hanging, and so the king goes to g5, rook c7 check is the obvious plan that was executed. So here, yeah. here I guess MVL is considering, do I take on c2, which is winning, or do I play h5? And the reason why he's thinking about that is, let's say I go, oop, not there. If I go h5, queens, mm -hmm. I take the queen, you take my rook, can I just go like h6, then h7, and king g7 to get a queen? So it's really a... He just took on c2 because it's winning, but he was just considering another winning option, which wasn't totally necessary to capture. Right. All right. So he's about to win this endgame with ease. G7 coming and resignation occurs. So how how are the the Marcy migraines three to one for the Norway gnomes? That's a very good result. The Norway gnomes are in second place right now in the central division the marcy migraines are almost in the bottom two just barely so they still have a chance to fight for the top four positions so very important match for them they are hungry and sometimes it pays to be the hungrier yeah well, team. i'm also hungry so can that's they... why you gotta give the burger a chance <laughs> i did give burger a chance but burger has let me down that's that's unfortunate. And I picked up my <laughs> fantasy team, so... Whoa! What's the... What? what is going on? The game between JS Prepsy and Markin 2B. Whoa. Uh, there's a queen preparing to mate, but a rook that is pinned. And then there's this weird knight-bishop combination on B3. There's a bishop... Yeah, what is going on? Wait, and what is... The mater okay, wait. Now White's up with the entire board. I, I, okay. I was so confused when I first saw the position, but how many pieces white up a queen for a queen and rook for two minor pieces i think that's too much you just take the knight on b3 and what in the world happened here okay well now it's over but i thought i was expecting some fireworks in the end wait there. why did white have two queens in this game white had two queens how far back what up the... are you <laughs> okay we'll go to the end of this game but i was wondering what happened here this is the most ridiculous game. Okay, the game is over. Alexandra, bear with me. Go yeah. to move yeah. 14. Okay. So he took on e4, which is winning a pawn, because after f takes e4, bishop takes c8. You take my bishop on c8, queen g4 check, wins the rook, right? Okay. So he didn't take on e4, went queen g6. White went d6, took on c5, took a second pawn, went d7, and then got a queen on d8. Now... Maurizi didn't even take the queen. He didn't take the queen. Yeah. And instead, White is playing Ella. with two queens. I didn't even see how this game happened, but all of a sudden I saw queen on g5 and another queen on e2. So this CM, first he, he got a, a draw against somebody 500 points rated in his first game. Yep. And now he's just so confident that he's like, have two queens. Yeah, exactly. Take a second queen. I don't need Why it. did he resign? What is okay. Yeah. I don't want to see this anymore. Yeah, it's... Let's honest. move on. I love it when you're the one who's, like, disgusting. No, this is disrespectful. Come on, <laughs> two queens. Yeah. So I'm looking at the game between Alexianko and Jan Christoph Duda because Alexianko has had two nice victories, and mm -hmm. Duda is Jan Christoph Duda. So that in and of itself is a good reason to watch the game. But this that is... That was very easy reasoning. Petrov gone wrong for black. Because right. Look at the dominance by white's pieces. Like, if I asked you, Alexander, what's black's plan? Go. Uh, survive. Yeah? How are you going to do that? I am going to sit and try to blockade around my king okay. and hope you make a mistake and that eventually I have, like, B3 or something opening and some miracle happening. Okay. So I, I love what you said about... I tried. No, no. You're, I love what you said about <laughs> sitting patiently because... It's what humans are really bad at doing and what, you know, you end up plugging a game like this into an engine and 
honestly, it's why some people make bad opening choices. They see the engine says, oh, it's only plus 0.4. But the best moves for you are just to sit and do nothing. And it's yeah. very hard for us to do, right? You're, you know, our inclination is for black, should I go A3? Should I go B3? Should I try to right. create a counterattack? But I think what Duda needs to do, honestly, is just sit and do nothing. Because his D6 pawn is protected by his bishop. It's a terrible bishop, but at least it protects the pawn. His rook on C7 will protect the F7 pawn, so the queen can just go back and forth between B7, D7. Okay, he went queen B7. So mm -hmm. he's going to trade the queens. He'll still have less space, and I think he just needs to sit and say, give me your best shot. I don't see how you're going to win this game. Exactly. So that's exactly what you were thinking, right? That is what I was thinking. Yeah, um, I mean, you said it, so I'm, I'm just agreeing with you. I mean, sometimes it's easier to just have a sitting plan rather than... I, I mean, the, the reason why that's that makes a lot of sense is you just can't really push any of these pawns and your piece is already where they need to be. Yep. And the same, honestly, might be said of white's position, right? Because anytime you play a move like h6, you have to consider, well, can actually black take it? And then might I have, let's say, you know, I take this pawn and give this pawn h6. Well, if this rook's on g6, then this pawn h6 later in the game can be captured. And yeah, my king looks a little scary on the you know, king side there, but it looks like black is defending. And in the long run, that might be a bigger weakness than it is an asset. So I think both sides are sort of stuck in the position and trying to figure out a kind of concrete strategy is not easy here. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Do you think Duda is going to be able to pull this off or do you think he might just get impatient and who, who would you give the better chances to here? Better chances to here. Wow. So tough. I mean, I really think this is just like a toss up. I, I, okay, I'm going to say Duda because he's the better player. Mm -hmm. But when I see a position like this, like, I still don't see where black is going to activate either. I guess if I'm fortunate, I can play rook to e4, rook to e5, try to trade off one pair of rooks. I mean, rook e4 actually makes sense hitting you know, if we trade the c4 pawn. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think that white can also sit tight and just not really do much of anything and claim that you know, neither side can make progress, so we should shake hands. Yeah, and... <laughs> that's funny but another thing you mentioned earlier was how this was a bad petrov yeah. but it seems like duda really understands these types of positions For do you sure. think that maybe this is something that he has been pretty prepped on and he'd actually like playing this kind of position as black because that's a very yeah it, an counterintuitive idea it takes a, a certain style to be able to sit and play positions that are like passive and you don't really see an active plan. I mean, you play the French, so you know all about that. Uh, but, wow. <laughs> but, um, you know, here, for example, it, it's a pretty critical moment in terms of coming up with something, some strategy, not just coming up with a move. Because I can see so many moves for black. It's queen c6, uh, queen c7, queen c6, queen a7, queen a8, whatever, like queen b8. Just mm -hmm. doing anything over there on the queen side and, and pretty much doing nothing. All makes sense to me. But can I come up with something a little bit more, uh, there he goes, rook e4, a little bit more aggressive and here comes g6 as a response which i think is a mistake because unless i'm getting right. a checkmate attack i've just pushed the block it I can, up i can yep. yeah, i can capture it twice even yeah it reminds me a little bit of hedgehog positions where you're playing really passively and you're basically just waiting for your opponent to open it up but a lot of ways that they can open up the position is actually worse for them yes and you're also partly playing on your opponent's impatience would recommend playing against a new young kid for not sure. to give up strategy not to give away strategies on beating kids who are learning to play chess which we should encourage but <laughs> less patient and it's very funny to see them rea react that's them. actually a great comparison alexandra because it's, it's very similar right you just have to sit and yeah. wait and here white one g6 but b3 is more powerful if you take on f7 i can just take back on f7 my queen is doing all the defending of my rooks, and now I'm about to rip open the white king with b takes c2. And if mm -hmm. you t try to take twice on b3, or take with a c pawn on b3, you lose immediately lose a piece because rook takes f4 comes, and after bishop f4, I think I have queen e4 check, checking the king, winning this bishop on f4. So Nice find there. I think b3 is just a more powerful move to open up the position. Yeah, it looks like... And, um... Paul Senger, thank you. I'm glad that you're enjoying the commentary. You're in Europe, so you're getting some rest. That's totally fair. Nice to 
almost 4,000, no, 3,000. Uh, 400 of you who are watching. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the chess. If you're new here and you're wondering, hey, why is this old game on homepage of Twitch? I don't see any shooting. I don't see any building. Well, you're not looking closely enough. Come say hi in the chat and we'll show you the theatrics. Absolutely. Yep. A hundred percent. So Duda, I think, is going to win this game. I liked his position. I thought it was very... Well, I didn't like it at first. Then the, the more shuffling that happened, I started to appreciate it a little more, just thinking maybe doing nothing is the right strategy. Alexianko went G6. Duda mm -hmm. immediately responded with B3. Alexianko goes in the think tank. That's a worrisome sign for me because when your opponent plays B3 and now you're thinking for a long time, yeah, that's a problem. So what to do now? What to do? No, I, I'm just looking quickly at the other games to make sure we're not missing anything. Yeah, you send me. You can send me anywhere. I'm happy to, to go elsewhere from here. Perfect. I, I like crazy coffee man's comment about the bishops being the snipers and the pawns of fortresses. That's a good way to think about it. Yep. Um, this actually does seem like one of the more interesting games. So I guess we could stick here for a while. Let's okay. I'm down. And seeing of pawns and fortresses, right? They're very. Yep. Good thing to mention is G takes H7, won a pawn, or took a pawn, I should say, and instead of capturing back, the king went to H8. And the reason why you go to H8 is that pawn is actually a shield for you. Because right. if this pawn were gone, let's imagine this H pawn is you know off the board. I just dragged it with my mouse away. Then all of a sudden, white can go H6, and it looks a little bit scary. But with that pawn on H7, it's actually shielding the black king in a very useful way. So um, now that... Well, okay, queen f Yep, what and also if it ever trades off into an end game, black can recapture the pawn very quickly, so yep. he's not even risking being down material for this. Absolutely true. And the move queen f5, can I just take this rook on f4? Like, what's your response going to be? Yeah, rook takes f4. I don't like taking with the bishop because then you get rook e2, which looks terrifying. Eesh. Yep. Um, but is there a problem with taking with the queen? Probably rook e4. And then rook takes c4 and similar issues in your, you know, on the, the queen side and your, where your king is. Okay, so we just looked at the two options of taking. Neither <laughs> of them look good. Probably rook takes f4 is a good move here. Rook f4 looks real good. Yep. Um, another move that looks, oh no, never mind, I blundered. I would say rook uh, e7 to e5, but then the f7 pawn is hanging. So I definitely do not want to give up that pawn. That's important. But That's true. No, no need to give three pawns and... Such a nice position like this. Yeah, he took. Oh, thank you, Gushy. Gushy was helping me with my webcam settings, which is why she's saying it looks fantastic. So thanks, Gushy. Thanks, Gushy. For all the support you do with all us chess players and our questionable tech setups occasionally. <laughs> I just saw someone else said, oh, my, my Twitch is in Russian. Anyone know how to change the language? Well, you're definitely in the right place. You know, I'm sure there are many people um, who speak Russian in the chat because chess is beloved uh, in the countries from the former Soviet Union, of course. Definitely. Russian. And there's a lot of people speaking Russian in this game chat, actually. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, no, I, I have no idea what's going on. Um, well, can't understand the oh, Russian okay. characters. Took? Cyrillic? Did I say it right this time? I think that's what it's called. Cyrillic? Anyway. Yeah, the Cyrillic's right. Uh, Bishop takes f4. So didn't we just say that your move, rookie 2, looked pretty straightforward and good? It looks very scary. Maybe he he's trying to see if there's something better, like, I don't know, maybe taking on c2 first, but then, then queen comes he just back. takes back with the queen, so it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I guess queen f3 is another move that looks very interesting because you pin the bishop, you threaten yep. the rook on d1, so that's, okay, I can understand, certainly understand thinking about that move here. Yeah. But rook e2, that's, if I had, you know, 12 seconds on the clock, I put rookie two immediately, and right. he plays rookie two. So you're on fire right now. You're coming up with the, the good strategies. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. It's almost like I mean, you're rooting it's... for young Christoph Duda. Or it's like I'm a chess player, and my rook can go to the second rank, and I have an attack, <laughs> and I'm like, I could put two and two together there. <laughs> okay, now who's being the robot now? I was like, you're, you know, you're having emotions, you're rooting for somebody, you're finding it. You're adrenaline. rubbing off on me, Robo Hess. Yeah. Well, no, wait, we're Robo as a team, right? Emotions. The first two letters. More like Hess. <laughs> the first two letters of my first name and the first two letters of your last name, Robo. It's our team name. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so, you know, it's not even me rubbing off. It's just that's our team dynamic. 
Exactly. Um, but, you know, hopefully we can also see moves like the engine. But no engines used here, but everyone liking the real well, uh, you don't need an engine when you're commentating. Before, so. You know, I don't mind making mistakes, right? That's, that's really about it. That's fair. It's a good attitude to have. Um, um, -dum -dum. Okay, I'm, I'm checking again some of the other, because I guess they do have quite a bit of time. Actually, no, they don't. Kirill is <laughs> under a minute. Let's stay Wait, here. Quite a bit. I mean, if you, if you have over 20 seconds, it's basically a classical game. No, I got to go to these other games. You're talking about time. Georg Meyer has 16 seconds. So let's just hop there real quick. And Perfect. Georg Meyer is up in exchange. So he's doing well. And Ina Agres also has 15 seconds. So I'm going to bop between these two games. And below do, who's that? That's the Duda game. His opponent is 26 seconds. So we've got to hop between these three games. I'm going to go back and yep. forth real quick. Ina Agrest with the white. No, she's the black pieces. So Sebastian Maze trying to push those pawns here uh, with white. And, well, it's opposite color bishops, which gives black some hope. But I don't see how you're going to c contend with these past pawns on the king side, especially with seven seconds left. Right. And she's about to Yeah, lose three time. seconds. She's about to flag. Oof. Um, Oof. That looks like an interesting move, but... I think you can just take it. <laughs> yeah, you could probably take it inside the two on one, but black would be able to sacrifice or try to sacrifice a piece for those pawns. So that's something to keep an eye on. On um, maybe e5 here. Just it's more important to push the pawns than to yep. you know keep a pawn up. So e5, you take on g5, then I go bishop c3 and e6 check, and my pawns are really rolling. In fact, the p black right. pawn on c4 helps white in some ways because the bishop can't go to c4 to cover that diagonal and sacrifice. Yep, his own pawn is actually blocking him from where he wants to be. Yes, yeah, you know, she she needs to be careful. She's only six seconds. She's in trouble. I think Inagress is going down here, but I got to keep flipping back and forth. I'm sorry to do this, but so many okay, games in 20 gotta seconds. Okay, you got to do it. Whoa, there's a king on B3. I just saw that. Second. How did that king get there? Oof. He just gave it some checks, and the king walked up to B3 to defend C4, and the rook B7 check is clearly tempting. Maybe just G6, though. Play G6, attack the queen. That Stop way the you can... counterplay. Yeah, just make sure your king if he does it. Because you want to save this rook b7 check. It might not be the best square for the rook. Maybe you want to put it somewhere else. So uh, I like the opportunity to play queen b7 check to queen e4 and then rook a7 check, for example. Uh, it's, it's, it just goes to show that sometimes you want to savor that check. And, you know, save it up. Now queen, rook b7 check will be good because where's that king going? You have to go to c3 after rook b7 check because then you keep this c4 pawn protected. But after king mm -hmm. to c3, I don't know, queen a1 or queen a4... You're just hunting this king down. Right. Is there anything black has to be careful about missing here? Nah. King, yeah. King's too safe. Or the pawn on f7, just don't leave. Here, one queen a4, perfect. Just don't leave this f7 pawn unprotected because then you lose. But with that protected, the g7 square under control. Now queen d1 check should be very, very good. In fact, I think it's going to be almost a forced mate. Queen d1 check, bishop d2, rook b3 check. And here it comes. I'm just laughing at chat. Um, you guys are roasting. It's it's funny. They're roasting whom? Me? Uh, you, the it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid doubled when I'm paired with Danny. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Well, I I know you guys have this funny kibitzing back and forth. So I will. Mm, anyway. <laughs> you're like, I, I don't know. <laughs> you're sitting this one out. I'm sitting this one out. I'll let you two take it on. Whoa! What is that? Rook h5, desperado, doesn't work. Just took the bishop with check and won by resignation. So that's a nice win by Duda. Let's go back to Georg Meyer. He has six seconds left, but Duda. Duda that was impressive, especially looking at that position that seemed just so inhuman to have to play. Yeah, no, he just, he waited. He was patient, then he struck with b3 at the right time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're looking at the Georg Meyer game and the... The Ina Agres game also finished, so we could look at that a little bit after just to summarize what happened. Okay. Well, this game between Meyer and Lagarde, it's Lagarde's move. He's trying to go after this G-pawn, and then after the, the G-pawn's loss, his H-pawn will roll. Well, okay, that H-pawn's about to go, go down, but then F3 is lost. So is there a way for Black to, let's say, take this knight on A4? Maybe let's just play bishop E6. And... He did play bishop e6, and he's going to win the f pawn, and then try right. to use the h pawn. But, but if if the if white is able to trade the knight for the bishop here, um, and then take on h, okay, this move order is probably fine as well. Yeah, I like I like what white's doing here because you play rook h8. That's what he just did. Now knight d3 mm -hmm. can stop that pawn, 
Or if you go f4, I go knight d3 anyway, and your pawn's going to be in trouble. So it looks yep. like black is just too slow with his b pawn rolling. Right. His b pawn is going to promote. Um, black is also trying, but he's not going to get too far because it's much easier to stop the pawn with a rook. And the knight is so close to the f pawn that after it's on d3, there's just not enough counterplay. If black tries to get his knight close, close like he is right now, it's really easy to kick it out with the rook. Yeah, and that's what, you know, this knight on b5 is going to give a check, try to go back to b5, but now this king can even come to e5, and then you can kick the knight out from b5 with the rook. So why is just co coordinating very well here, stopping this f-pawn from rolling, and with that in mind, a move like, yeah, knight d3 to e5 with check, and king to c5, and then just start pushing the b-pawn. Right. Well, nice, nice end game play. Yep. From Georg, which is what we'd expect. Yeah, no, Georg is known for his positional prowess and his endgame technique is very, very good. So uh, I wasn't too worried about him. King c5 here. If you go f4, knight f6 wins the bishop. So he moved out of the pin. But now f4 is not possible because my knight covers the square. Yeah, this yep. Is not, um, it's not too early to resign. Okay, now he's getting so, desperate. So, so let's see. This is the final uh, game in the third match between the bottom bottom snowballs and the Canes blitz streams. It looks like it's going to be six and a half to four and a half. So Canes is actually still leading, even though Baden Baden is doing better in the leaderboard. So hopefully for Baden Baden, they can maintain their lead, but pretty good result for the blitz streams. Yeah, and it's going to be, I guess, six so and a half, five and a half after this game. So uh, someone just said, I thought it was Stockholm snowballs. That's what they were last year. They become yeah. Baden Baden. And here, yeah, they're... they wanted to stay in the the spa village of Germany. Who wouldn't? <laughs> I feel like we all deserve a vacation there, so I understand. I don't disagree, but yeah, uh, Khan is up six and a half, five and a half right now. So uh, let's actually pull up the standings just to remind everybody yep. what they were heading into today. Here are the standings. As you see in the central division, there Baden Baden was in first place, one hundred and seven and a half points, and Norway Gnomes were in second. But they were well ahead of the other teams in their division. So they're really in good shape. They're almost certain to make the playoffs at this point. But they're struggling mm -hmm. today. Norway struggling against Marseille. And Baden-Baden struggling against Caen. The French team's pulling off uh, upsets here. If you had to predict the team that's going to win the central division and go to the finals, who would it be? Ooh. The team that's going to win the central division and go to the finals. I... No, yeah, I, I plead the fifth. I don't it's know. It's too hard. It's too, it's hard. too hard. Okay. Yeah, I'm, that's fair. I, I don't Chat, know. Chat, you can predict as well. We don't just have to ask Robert the hard questions. You guys can answer them as well. Yeah, you just really put me on the spot there. I'm trying to figure it out. and It, it was too hard. No worries. Um, and Perpetual Cellmate is saying again that we also stream our on, on... Whoa, I just closed out of Twitch chat, so I'm going to miss stuff for a little bit. Um. But if you guys want to see Robert Hess streaming on his own channel, maybe talking about sports and modern art and chess, hopefully all three of those, just hover over his face and you can follow him with one click and you'll still be here. If you want to listen to modern art, stay away from my, my channel because, oof, not, uh, not going to be a fan. I, I pulled up Mr. Burger Burger. Whoa, that's the game I just came at as well. Yeah, okay. because I'm just upset. I picked him for my fantasy team. This is about to be his third straight loss. His king is on g6, which is never a good sign. There is a rook on g5 giving it a check. If you go to f6, queen e5 check comes, and your king has to run to e7, where it's running into discovered checks. <sighs> it's, it's rough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. I, he hasn't won a game yet. Well, I was just looking at that. Oh, I think I have a, I can, I can pull this up. I got a little template for that too. Um, bam. I can see all the scores here. So where is he? Where are you, Dr. Burger Burger? You are, have, you have zero points. Yep. But so do most board fours. Like if you look down. Yeah, the... I was looking that more, most board fours have zero points or half a point, but that's also because um, the, the Berlin Bears have been playing earlier than them, right? Yeah. Because um, some games haven't finished yet. And it's just but. generally, right? You're board four. You're not really expected to score that many points. If you score one and a half points as a board four, that's a, quite a good result. So, yeah, um, yeah. look at this, the scoreboard there. Not doing well on the bottom boards. But Jan Christoph Duda, on the other hand, is in excellent shape, 3-0. So, yep. 
He's um, he's so yeah, the, the game you're looking at right now, it looks like Black might have to sacrifice his queen on g5. Yeah, but this is... And when I say it looks like he might have to, I think he certainly has to. But this is just sad life. I mean, the king, yeah, the king so... is still on g5, go f4 check, and just continue to attack. He went king f6. So he's allowing queen e5? How did he go king f6 here? Why would that be a good idea? Queen e5 check on the spot. King e7, only legal move. And then do I go knight c Also, by the way, Alexander, queen on e5 protects h2. <laughs> like, True, yep. Knight c7 check, I can just go win your rook. At you know, the very least, I can just go... In the worst case, there. yeah. Yeah, come on. Come on. No, here. but there, there, there's probably a mate sooner or later here, or I guess he could just take all the advantage in the world, and he has nothing to worry about. I agree with... The best move here is to resign. Yeah, I was about to read that. We're on the same page right now. We both saw this game, got excited. We both saw that comment. Yeah, best move here does look to be resigned. That way we can I told you, game. Robo Hess rubbing off. Robo Hess. Uh-oh. Don't make me do it. I'm going away. Oh, I, I just like your Robo voice. It's pretty entertaining. It's just, um, just soothing? It is, in a weird way. Okay, well, I'm glad. I'm just too many humans these days. Just kidding. I moved over to uh, Baby Legs against um, that's Arik Braun with the white pieces and Hippolito Asis Gargatagli with black. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, whew, so what do you here? think of the pawn structure here? Uh, I first need to count the material, and I see that it's even material somehow, because this position looks anything but even in, in material. But I hate this pawn on g7. You see that pawn? Black's up a pawn there? Yep. So uh, white's up a bishop, but down a pawn. Seems like a good, pretty good trade-off for white. I mean, just... Yeah, good on you to... Good on... Yeah, we are, we are. Okay, never mind. Um, all right, so you, you counted the material. What do you move on next as you're evaluating the position? What do I look at next? Well, I look at that yeah. pawn on g7, then I look we at... We added a new functionality to Robo Hess. He's not just saying the evaluation, but he is speaking about how he comes to it. It's actually an interesting AI problem nowadays. Not just giving the results, but explaining how the decision was made. I'm, I'm going to try that. It sounds probably useful for everybody except for me, but let's go with it. Um, so you asked me about this position, okay, and my evaluation. I look at the pawn on g7, I look away, I look back, and it's still a pawn on g7. I look away, and I look back, and it's still there. So, you know, I mean, a serious note, look what white just did, c5, which is a good move, followed by d4. Look how much space white is controlling. Look at how little space black is controlling. And yes, right. the rook has a semi-open b file, which it just went to, but it's not like you're really getting an attack here because at the end of the day, why can't I say rook h2 if need be to protect this bishop on b2? So if I'm white, I think, well, do I need my knight to get to h5? Like, you know, e2, er, drawing bad arrows here. Knight e2, knight g3, knight h5. That would be an interesting plan. Do I want to bring my queen to a6 and just go after the weak black queenside pawns? That looks like a very viable strategy here and I think one that will be employed and I just think that black has no active play whatsoever and so I hate black's position yeah no yes Maybe? sorry I, I I was I got distracted by BJH's comment it was a long comment I'm sorry about that um apparently there's a lot of shade being thrown towards Hess so I'm gonna turn that off no no don't turn off the shade I like it it makes me feel makes me feel alive you know? There we go. There you go, BJH. You heard it here first. Consensual shade. Yeah, exactly. And like you just people tell me, you know, I'm too too robotic, right? Robo. So. Well, when I say robo, I, I say it as a compliment. But okay, I I agree with your evaluation here. Um, I guess the more interesting question is, what can Gargatagli try to do here? Uh, less space, pawn on g7. What he doesn't really have an attack. What he can do is go look over it. Daniel Forsen's game, because there is an attack for black in that game, or at least so it seems, where white is up a piece, but black has total control over the h file. So if white is not careful and just a few moves, rook comes to h6, and then rook comes to h1, something like that, and that looks quite problematic. Right. So that's why white is playing queen g4, forcing move, giving oh. black a check. After king b is a queen e4 trading the queens. That's really nice. Oh, beautiful. That's exactly what white needs to do here to just get the attack totally cut off. 
because once there's no queens on the board, it's a lot easier for white. And then he's just, he has a knight for two pawns. Two pawns. No, that's and huge. he has a pass pawn, so yeah. That's so huge. I mean, if not for queen e4 after king b8, you know, I'm really worried about white's king. Granted, you know, I'm sure objectively white's still doing fine, uh, but it's very scary to face this, especially with not much time on your clock. But queen e4 just ends the discussion. There's no attack anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to trade queens after the queen trade, and you play, let's say, queen e4, knight e4, rook c6. All right, like, you're up two pawns for this knight, but then there's a, a g pawn that's unopposed on this side of the board. It just is too much material for white, and that's a right. really nice queen g4 check and queen e4 played nice. Yep. So very nice way of simplifying. You pointed out the instructional pieces there. Now white is definitely going to win this game, which... Let's see how that affects the scores. Okay, Barcelona Raptors, Berlin Bears, very close so far. It looks like if the Berlin Bears win this game, then they should be tied. Yeah, wow, it's 5-4. So then we've got some good matches today. Okay, Marseille is just uh, really taking the gnomes to school here, but all the other matches are pretty close heading into the uh, final leg of this. Yeah. Man, Norway gnomes, what's happening? Holy gnomes, I like that. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, man. Yeah. This is not good. Demolition. Aren't, aren't the gnomes leading the pack? Yep. Yeah, yeah they're second place behind the Baden Baden Snowballs. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, if, if you guys want to provide some emotional support to Hammer, he's streaming for the gnomes right now. Go tell him everything is going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. Are you trying to say that he shouldn't, he, don't you worry about a thing? Is that what you're yeah. trying to tell Hammer? But I, I really don't think that every little thing is going to be all right. It looks real bad for the gnomes. Okay, a comeback is possible mathematically, but the way this match has been going and with MVL board one for the migraines, no, it's not happening. And yep. speaking of a comeback not happening, I went back to the game between Arik Braun and Hippolito Assis Gargatagli, and Black's position has not gotten even a smidgen better. And this move Bishop A3 was played by Braun so that he can play D5. Yeah, I'm just, I, I can't stand looking at this position. I don't, I don't like this game. Is there any other game we can look at? What about MVL and Johan Christensen? Because Christensen is in time pressure here. Okay. We'll keep an eye out on that other game as well. But Christensen. How does MVL always have almost 13 minutes? Because he's 2,800 and his preparation is unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is crazy. Wait, what's the material count? White is up a rook for a knight and how many pawns? One pawn, one, two, three, four for white, five for black. So it's a knight and pawn for a rook. And oh my God, Queen A check. Queen A check. Look at this. Beautiful move. Bring out your forks. Family fork. Bring out your forks. Let's go, chat. Bring out the family fork. He just played King B1. No, he missed it. He, that was such a nice move. MBL, I'm finding these things for you. Come on, man. Come on. He's not doing enough puzzle rush. Hikaru, where he are you? Shake your head. King B1? King Did B1. He play King B1 here? No. That's just... I understand why you want king b1 to make your king feel safer, so no check on c5 or anything like that. But queen a queen 8 check, do it again! Don't miss it a second time. Queen 8. Come on, buddy. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm stupefied here. Come on, buddy. There, what? It's just no. such a straightforward tactic. They can't be calculating something else here. Okay, a third time. Third time's a charm. Sun's, sun's out, fork's out. No! Okay, <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Somebody... Robo has turning off. Yeah. Cannot understand humans. We're... I'm going to have to... No, I mean, I'm sure Maxine This will... is why humans are losing the war. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I mean, just... It's just... You know, you do enough puzzle rush. You just see this... I Okay, I actually explained why I saw this so quickly. Uh... I see that... I want to do something on the C7 square. And I also see that it hits a queen and a rook. But more importantly, I know that this king is protecting his pawn on c7. I can't get a second piece attacking it. But then I see, okay, if I bring this king to a square like a8 or e8 or a6, then I get a fork in. So queen a8 check was there for the taking. Now he's going to have to win this game all over again. Okay, white is still better. In fact, these, the series of trades that just happened 
should favor white here, move like queen c4, trying to head over to d5 or to g8, looks pretty good, but um, clearly a huge missed opportunity. What I don't understand is, well, actually a lot of things. He just played this so, I often say, hey, they didn't see it because time pressure, but this is MVL and it was offered three times in a row and he has 12 minutes, so I, yeah. I refuse to try and understand the situation here. <laughs> is Bo just going to talk like that the rest of the stream? No, no. Why not, Alexandra? <laughs> just talk. Oh, man. Um, somebody is saying you think Hess is wrong about this. I don't think so, Gary Hat. Wait. I think. Check, takes, check, king here, takes. The knight gets trapped on e6. That knight's not trapped because I can go to g7. And you don't have a way to attack my knight, because you go rook d6, I have knight c5. So right. there is no way to trap my knight. So maybe maybe I'm wrong. It's always possible I'm wrong. I don't mind being wrong. But I see I just don't think you were in this position. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Full full I'm uh you're oh, good no, cop, I'm Robocop, I guess. There we go. So yeah, this is um Okay, now MVL should be in the clear here, though. Queen, King A2, I like that move, just getting out of uh, the pin. And so he'll still win this game, but he missed Queen A check. So, okay, baby legs game that we were looking at before. Okay, we'll we'll come back, back to MVL to soon. Me. Actually, MVL might be delivering a checkmate as well, because if that King goes to A7, I see some Queen A4, Knight D5 check stuff happening. And if you okay. block on D8, I can just sacrifice on D8. So, like, let's say Knight D8, I could probably take, take, and Queen takes D4, for example. Um, this is probably even better than I'm showing, but at least here I'm up a piece. So Bishop okay. Uh, so, so now, I guess, yeah, we're going to come back to this game. I'm already at the baby leg game. All right, baby legs. Because last time we were here, well, we were just talking about how nice a position white had. Black still has his bishop on g7, and that's probably where it's going to end its life. Wait, what bishop? Uh, I don't see a bishop. <laughs> right, sorry, the pawn on g7. Yeah, thank you. That's a big pawn. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, but he did get some type of counterplay here. He has a pawn on, you know, g4, and it's a pass pawn. Yeah, I agree with that. That's true. Uh, his knight is on e5, which is the best place the knight can be placed, so it's kind of compensating for the terrible, worst position of the pawn on g7. But now white's going to play bishop c1. Yep. And then, if, well, actually, in bishop c1, I was rook b4. So I don't love bishop c1 because rook b4 also threatens rook c4 check. And that's, this might have been a big blunder. Um, because he's just going to grab e4. Okay, he can grab e4. Yeah, he can just take e4 now. Wait, why, why did he throw in that check? No, you were right. Take on e4 for sure. And what does this check help with? Maybe he's thinking that he's pushing the king a little bit further back. Which is obviously good. But now there's no never be rook c4 check taking c5, right? Like now my knight can move away from e6. Yep. And I'm not worried about that pawn. So rook b2, swing the rook to the open file, go to b7, and then to b8. Well, that's just swing the rook. Let's go, Arik Braun. Yep. Do it. Do it. Peer pressure from Robert Hess. Yeah, I mean, he's not listening, but do it. Yeah, so after rook b2. There's no way to stop rook b7 check. Um, it's going to happen, and then your rook is getting on the seventh file. You're probably going to pick up a pawn, and he's helping you push d7. So that move is extremely strong. Whoa. I, I don't want to play guess the move anymore, Robert. I'm done with this game. I honestly think that black is not even in that big of a big difficulties anymore. I mean, the position is still complicated, but I don't know what... In fact, knight takes c5 is a big threat now that I think about it. Black is about to play knight takes c5, distracting the knight away from the protection of the bishop here. Very nice deflection tactic here. Yikes. Um, I mean, white can play. It's making me literally scratch my head. I'm confused. We have, yeah. We, also, MVL's gonna, king is on d3. What's going on here? Do we need to, I think we need to go back to that game. Well, the other game is six seconds. I mean, I, I'm going to flip back and forth because this okay. game is three seconds, two seconds. Oh, he made his move in two seconds. seconds for Hippolito. Two seconds left yeah. and he made that move. But he just won a pawn. Now, Hippolito's going to win this game. How is it possible? He had the biggest pawn on G7. 
You know, I feel like I actually have a lot of insight in positions like this where Black won because I often get just terrible opening positions that people look at and they're, they think, what the heck happened here? And the way you win those positions is just you wait and wait for your wait. opponent to open it. And then as soon as they make a mistake, like Braun did, you take advantage. Yeah, why did he go bishop e7? I thought he could just go rook d4 check. Instead of bishop e7 to move a go, rook d4 check yeah. just said, okay, my rook's behind the pawn, so I'm threatening to take your knight on c5. And if we trade yeah. rooks on d2, just show quickly, I think I can just go king yeah. e7 and go gobble this d7 pawn. So that was a missed Yeah, no, rook, rook d4, I think, was winning again here. Uh-oh. But he can't... This is, still win this is still winning, though. He can't take the knight on c5 with the bishop because then d8 equals queen. He can't take it with the rook either because d8 equals queen. So the knight's not actually under attack, which means that this is... Not as good for black as he thought. Ooh, that can't be good. You don't, 96 now. You're getting a queen. Do you get a queen yep. or go rook b8? Okay, let's see. I would just get a... Mm. So d8 queen, simple. He now has a knight for three pawns. But the he's going to get what, two of the pawns back. But he might... Almost immediately. But this is still not obvious. Normally, rook... Maybe he's going to be able to checkmate black. Yeah, exactly. Normally, rook and knight versus rook is an easy draw, but here it's not so easy because your king is already on the back rank, so knight of five is coming. Mm -hmm. And you just have to be very careful not to get checkmated. And his king is being pushed up to the side of the board. He should play... Okay, that's a bad move. Let's see, there's got to be a mate here. Knight e7 check? Yes, knight e7 okay. check. Okay. Oh, no! Don't go backwards! Oh, actually, knight h6 check was probably even better. King h8, oh, knight f7. So let me... King h7. I, I, I have to go back after the game because we're making so many moves, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm just saving this position so I could look at it. No, there had to be a mate there. Yeah, I'm sure. And now it's now we're in a much easier to hold position, but still, knight e6, rook c6 check, knight e6. And there's <laughs> a lot of tricks in a position like this. Okay, rook, nope. rook check. Rook b8, knight g5 check, it's mate. King h7, knight g5, rook h8. This is exactly the mate we were going for before. He blundered, and he lost. And he's going to lose on time instead of playing it out. So king h7, knight g5 check, king h6, rook b8 is check and mate. King is perfect on f6. Yep. And so we go back to that position as well after boom, boom, boom. boom. On move 63 Yeah. after rook a2. Knight h6 check. You can't go to f8 because rook b8 is mate. Mm -hmm. You go to h8, but knight f7 check comes. The same exact mate we got in the game. Um, if yep. king h7, knight g5 check, you go to h6, and I mate you on h7. If you go yep. back g8, I mate you on b8. Very nice mate. All right, but let's go to Maxime vachet le Oh my gosh, he won a queen as soon as I turned in the game. MVL for the win, and he won on time. Well, hey, he just delayed the fork. Are you, are you feeling better now? No. Maxime. Maxime, are you listening? No, you're definitely not listening. But, okay, he some of his king was on d3 before, and I thought it was complicated. But look at move 42 in this game. Like, he ran his king up to, like, e4, and then to e5, and then took the pawn, like, went into discovered check on move 46. But then king takes f4. This is a discovered check, but there's no good discovery to make. There's no way this knight on d4 can attack another piece because it goes to c6, queen e4 blocks, and I'm out of the woods. So, yeah. Really nice play. People are saying he, he didn't want to give away his queen for the fork. <laughs> yeah, he, he wanted more. Yeah. Very, very greedy there. Yeah, what a greedy man. Oh, man. So, um, okay, the, but, the Khan is in the last round, right, against Baden-Baden? Yep. Should we... Yep, so six and a half, five and a half. Yeah, we could... They're just starting the game, though, so if there's okay. any... Games that are ending, for example, the game between Zaitan 56 and Arthur Chicks is interesting, okay. and Arthur is okay. Arthur is you just, low on time. You know how proud of you I was for you know your pop culture knowledge and stuff like that. This is Zlatan, and Zlatan is one of the best footballers in the world. So, he, Zlatan. Zlatan. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Oh, Zlatan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I thought you were talking about art tours. And I was like, well, that's a weird crossover. <laughs> no, I don't. But... I don't know any great soccer players named Arthur. So, just just had to you know let you know. Is it time for the bagel <laughs> puns yet? By the way, you haven't had any yet. Yeah, I know. Do you want me to ask you some questions? Yes, please. How do you hold the bagel back? 
The silence is killing me here. I really want to get it. I don't know if I... Okay, tell me. You put some locks on it. Oh. Oh, oh the dead silence and no laughter. Okay, I'm going to move on to another <laughs> game. It hurts. Well, it hurts. You laugh after. You it hurts. Laugh after. I know, but you laughed because it was an awkward silence and you felt bad for me. No, no, I didn't feel bad. I laughed at you feeling bad for your joke. That was actually quite funny. Yeah, appreciate it. So oh. now I'm going to not make any more bagel puns and I'm going to go to some games. Johan Solomon is up a full roof against Mark Andrea Marizzi and about to checkmate and checkmates on the okay. board. So Norway now has three points and down th seven to three. <laughs> Magician 531 goes, Hess for that joke, I'm muting you. Hey, wow. you gotta appreciate it. Hey, he is, is trying with the jokes. Not every joke is gonna be out of, a 10 out of 10. I didn't create I'll the joke, I just recited it. Right. So not all jokes you pick are gonna be a 10 out of 10. Um, anyway, which game do you want to look at right now? Johan Solomon is the one you're looking at? No, nah, he won his game. So I went over to Jan Kristaps Duda because it's Jan Kristaps Duda. Okay, let's go back, see how Duda is doing. Um, man, people are harsh. They just... <laughs> that joke was like one night H3, so it was, it was bad. People, wow. People are hurting me. People are really hurting me right now. It's okay. Because you're a strong robot with no emotion. Yeah, exactly. I don't feel pain. Just so much sorrow. In fact, I'm taking myself off screen just so Humans I can. I'm, I'm, cr I'm crying a little bit. I'm giving you the standings. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm too sad, so I put on the standings so I can cry a little bit. It hurts. It hurts so much. <laughs> Look what you guys did. Look what you guys did. Apologize to Robert right now, or we're giving everybody a timeout. It hurts. But I... Nobody makes fun of Robert other than Danny. And you. And, <laughs> and like a lot of other people, but it's all good. I put it up the yeah. uh, little standings over here just so everyone sees how the individual players are doing. And Jan Christoph yep. Duda, the only... No, Michael Bezold has a perfect score on board, too, for the Berlin Bears. I need to find out who, where Michael Bezold is playing. Um, where do we where do we go? Where is that game? But I'm sticking on Duda. I just want to figure out what Bizold's username is so I can. Okay, let me find that to see if he started his game. He might have already won his third game, and they're still they're not into the final round yet. That might right. Be. Yeah, I don't. He's not playing right now. Um. Okay. So, Duda so, Meyer, it is, I guess. Duda Meyer, it is. I mean, this is quite a matchup. Polish fighter versus Jorg Meyer. Yep, and Georg with the black pieces, he is in a position where, okay, white has the bishop, and right. that bishop looks great on e4. It's spying on the, the king side. It also controls uh, many squares over there on the queen side. It's kind of on a perfect square, but the one downside is the knight and the bishop can't share the e4 square because the knight right. on, would love to go to e4 and then maybe into d6, or go to e4 and threaten knight f6, check, sacrifices. So, um, yeah, I, I, coming up with a move here for Duda actually isn't that simple. His position right. looks good, but I don't see a direct plan forward. Yep. So I guess let's think a little bit about what weaknesses Black has here. He has the pass pawn on c4, which can be both strong or a target. And he has to take care of his kingside position because maybe there are some future pawn pushes here that create some pressure although i don't see any right away maybe he can try to prepare e6 okay e6 it, yeah with you know the knight covers for now but you're right if like somehow yeah. i get e6 and you take with a pawn your light squares feel even more vulnerable that's for sure so i can't go f5 because my pawn e5 is hanging that's really right. annoying yeah the big problem with duda's position here his queen is stuck protecting the knight on c3 the pawn on f4 can't move because it's protecting e5. Yep. Um, the knight on c3 is stuck because it's protecting a2. His pieces are very immobile, you know? Yeah, they look Just good, but you're right. They yep. don't have anywhere to go to right now because they need to stay put and protect the uh, other pieces. So... Hmm. Norway board one has 0.5 points. That Oof. is... I mean... True. Again, they're the last team to be playing, so I guess it, it is pretty bad out of 
Yep. So let's see. Who, who, so we have this matchup between Khan and the um, the Bon Bon Snowballs. I just put up the other scene here. Just to, let's get other games in this match because they're five minutes apiece. We have Kirill Alexanko with the black piece against Maxime Lagarde. That looks to me like. What checkmate are they saying was missed? So and we, whoa, slow down a little with the all caps. Yeah, who missed the mate? Where and why? I, I don't know. Anyway, let's let's go back to it. <laughs> Did they just bait you into reading I, something? N no, they debated? were just. Yeah, I, I I use my mod powers. Not afraid to use it. So careful. All right. Um, yeah, I, I pulled up the game between Maxime Lagarde and Kirill Alexianko because I liked White's position here. Um, Black sort of has a desperate attempt at an attack, so it seems, whereas white has this knight on d4 that can head right to e6, and the queen e5 is necessary because not only was knight e6 a threat, knight takes f5, removing the guard of this knight on e4. So the queen on e5, it uh, protects that knight quite well. Right. So And rook takes c7 is not a free pawn because queen takes d5 as the follow-up, and that d5 as pawn is important because that diagonal is essential to the king's safety. Right, so um, yeah, you don't want to give up this d5 pawn, but I, I don't see any way to protect it. But rook takes c7 looks like the pawn trade you must make, although right. white shouldn't be thrilled about that occurrence. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely easier to calculate exchanges like this when they seem so forced because there's no better moves here on the board. Um, this was an English opening. Yeah, but it reminded me a bit as if it had come out of some. King's Indian, because that's when you see Black pushing the pawn so aggressively like this on F5 and on G5. Yep. Yeah, no, it, it first looked very calm, and then the storm was brought by Black with his G5, as you mentioned. Yeah. What side would you prefer to play here? I think White, because, you know, even if you take D5, my king feels vulnerable for the time being. I just, mm -hmm. the long-term potential is clearly in White's favor because of the pawn structure. And right. the knight on D4 is actually excellent. Right, so like, let's say I um, play queen takes d5 here. I, do you even have a good discovered check? That's my first question. So like, can I take on f7? Right, rook takes f7. I mean, the knight, if it goes to d2, which seems like the only piece it can attack here. I just want my king back to g1. Yeah, king back and... I have the f3 squared covered by my knight on d4. Otherwise you'd have knight f3 check, which yep. would be extremely powerful. But since I have that covered, I'm not too concerned. Especially since you just took a rook on f7. Right. So no matter what black does, even though you have two rooks hanging here, he can't get all of the material back. Yeah, and I'm just reading Cash Mankey's joke about, that. I said remove the guard and not remove the guard. That, is, uh, that was too obvious. I knew I'd be made fun of, but when you do it, it's much funnier. So. Right, because execution is a lot easier when you're typing it rather than saying it. Yep. Um, GWJ Wang just shouted that Duda pushed F5, so things are getting exciting. I think we have to go Duda. take a look there. Where's Duda's game? There it is. Bam. Wait, for, oh, someone Duda just won, by the way. Didn't. Sebastian. Who just won? Oh, no, it's a different match. Sebastian uh, Mikhailov lost to Jules Massard. But let's go back to Duda. Yeah, let's go back. Oh, um, he went straight, like the brute force method. He put his pawn on F5 and then simply sacrificed one and then the next. With I mean, we were looking at this earlier, but it seemed like it was too risky to do. Yeah, because, it, well, if you take on f6, I'm happy. I was more concerned about knight to g6, just sort of ignoring it for the moment. Yeah. And I figured if you take me on g7, then I can take back with my king. And mm -hmm. I am up a pawn as black here. So despite my king right. being uh, open and vulnerable, I thought that it might not be enough. So pawn takes yep. f6 is a move many would want to play. But then I think just rook b to e1 and getting more pieces into the attack because my rook can go to e3 and over to g3. And, yeah. Um, I don't like the idea of opening up the g file that easily for black. Uh, you suggested this during this game and also during a previous game, the idea of using your opponent's pieces like a blockader. Yeah. Obviously, it's not quite the case because you can take back on g7. But, oh, he took on f6. Th this stresses me out. I think Duda is going to win. Yeah, it's, it's just a tough position because rook e3 sort of comes naturally. Um, wait, rook e wait, there's also attacks with knight to e4, right? Bishop h7 check maybe is a worthwhile sacrifice. Just giving yeah. up your bishop 
and then playing knight to e4. And F I've been, I've been. Oh, this is an amazing find. Look at all the forks and I mean, discovery attacks you're finding today. I feel like I should just quit commentating and just go do puzzle rush right now. I think you would beat the new, become the new. No, definitely not. Hikaru's 55 is still. It's untouchable. Yeah, I mean, but MVL is 2,700, and he didn't see the, the Hess mate. Well, yeah, I don't know about that Queen A check miss. I'm a little upset about it. But this is, it's a clearance tactic, right? I, my, I really want my knight on E4 attacking this queen and attacking mm -hmm. this F6 pawn. So if I move my bishop somewhere else, let's say to B1, then black just plays F5, I think, and you cover the E4 right. square. So he played rook E3, queen G7. Okay, this is also looking quite nice. Now knight... No, that doesn't work. Wait, rook g3. Oh, so knight d5, distracted knight from e7. So knight d5, if you take my knight on d5, then rook g3 comes, winning the queen on g7. Tactics galore in this position. Yep. And also, Danny is saying MVL is trying to beat Hikaru's record soon. So if you beat MVL and MVL beat... It's clear. Just, just bringing that up here. So, so you rook... G3, okay, knight G6 forced because he has to block this pin. So was he now queen H5? Just continue putting pressure on the G6 square? Yep. King H7, I guess, is the only move to protect. His his king has to help here. And then maybe queen, can the queen jump over to C5, let's say, and then attack C4, F5. Ooh, risky looking move there. All right, so he's trying to get out of this by giving away one of his extra two pawns. But mm -hmm. I'm now really concerned about that knight coming from e4 to f6. Right. But I guess there's... So, mm -hmm. Rook d1 is a response if I move my knight away. Right. Okay. It's nice because even though white's king is really safe in this position, the one thing he hasn't fixed yet is giving his king some space so he doesn't get back ranked mated. So he has to be careful about that. And... Oof. How would, how would, okay, this game is really interesting. I think black may be doing all right here, though, because, like I said, knight e4, rook d1, that's something you're going to have to figure out. You want to play h4, but when, since my king's in h8, I can even probably take on h4, risky decision, but uh, a potential idea. And rook to d3, trading the rooks. Yes, yeah, very unclear still, but let's check out their teammates because that mm -hmm. you know, all these games are equally important, six and a half, five right. and a half. So let's go to who's in this match. Uh, Kirill Alexenko against Lagarde. Uh, Lagarde is uh, A. Bilodeau, I think, or is it Ricket Ricket Kitts? No, Ricket Kitts is Lagarde. Right. But um, and also the game between um, Mays Tovic and Vincent Kamer is interesting. It looks like. Oh wow! Yeah, that is fascinating here. Uh, Sebastian Mazé with the black pieces. He's in trouble here. It looks like against the young Vincent Keimer, who won the Grand Key yeah. Chess Open last year, and Black is not even up a pawn for his troubles. Like Right. He's been trying to trade off the queens to just get the attack off the board and simplify, but he hasn't been able to. Yeah, because queen, you, know, you don't want to trade queens here. I mean, maybe you do and are still doing well, but queen f3, keeping your options open. If white got two moves, g4, knight g3, in, that knight's coming to f5 or to h5 with real attacking chances. I do not like black's position here. You can't How even... can he? Yep. I was going to say, you can't even go bishop d3, I don't think, because it's going to be rook to b8, distracting the queen away. Uh, maybe it doesn't work, but something like that is going to be in the cards at some point. Right. I like queen g6 because he wants his queen closer to his king to try and block off future mates here. Bishop f5 right away. He didn't even miss a beat with this. Yep. So Now queen g4 check looks a little scary. I like it. And now I wish his rook could get on the back rank faster. Yeah, completely agreed. So what, the queen, queen h5 looks good? I mean, what just, do you think about ideas like king g2 and rook h1? I love it. Rook takes b5 is another move that's in the air at some point because I can get the e8 square. But king g2, rook b1, excuse me, rook h1, that's just a, a great idea. In fact, that's... I'm not sure if it's fast enough, but it's that extra pressure he needs. Yeah, but, you know... He's kind of paralyzing Black's position here. And the bishop on e6 is perfectly defending this d5 pawn. Yep. Yeah, so let's... I'm keeping an eye out on the... So Inna Agress won her game, so that's an important win for Baden-Baden. She beat Augustin Join, so that makes it 6.5, 6.5. Polish fighter, that is... Um, 
Duda against, they have not gone that much farther ahead here, but Meyer is 22 seconds and counting down. Okay, let me come, come there. He's 19, 18, 17. What, what, Meyer, you got to move. He went rook to d4. Six and a half, six and a half. Yep, this is very critical. Wait, queen c8 check? I mean, I would immediately put the, qu the queen check on the board. Cause... Would you play queen f8, try to trade off right away? Oof. Or well, play rook d8 back? Yeah, the problem with queen f8 is now queen c6, I guess? Or whatever, he went queen g8, but queen c6, and now f6 yep. for my knight or my queen. It's just so much harder to play this position for black because your king is so open. That's why he's getting so close to almost flagging yeah, he, here. He's queen d8 played. Um, a safe move for for Duda here would be to just play h3, make sure he doesn't get back rank mated. But I hope he has a more Rook exciting takes way to continue. You're, you're, you were about to say more exciting. There it is. Rook there we go. Take it with the queen on g6, throw in queen h6 check. I think black can play rook d1. I, I don't. If you played it, queen h6 check, and then there's at least a draw for white. So Right. So easy perpetual if he wants it. Yep. And I don't see anything better. Do you think he's gonna do you think he's gonna take the perpetual? Well, I guess what else can he do? His rook is hanging. Well he he, he could, can't take on d1. He could try queen h6, king g8, knight f6 check, king f7, and then queen h5 check, but that king might just go on a journey. And the thing is if you're not mating black, you're losing because of the material. Right. So Yeah, King G1 loses because Rook takes f1, king takes f1, rook d1. Yeah, your your king is uh, king f2, and then you just have queen checks. I assume that's winning. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. You even go queen b6 check to trade queens there, so that would be a problem. So right. To knight f6 check is the risky move to play. You go queen e6. Okay, Meyer doesn't have much time, but he can just move his king back. So I think it's going to be. Yeah, and neither side has enough to really. I mean, Duda has to make the decision here, but. It looks bad, and he has four seconds, so he should just but draw. But Meyer doesn't have like that much time left in all these moments. You know, it's right. But I don't see anything Duda can do. The rook takes d1, followed by, rook takes f1, excuse me, followed by rook d1 is a threat. So I, this is a draw. So let's knight of <gasps> six check. Knight of six. If queen f6, rook takes d1. So he's okay now. Queen g5 check. Oh, queen h7, it's mate. It's mate. Knight d7, double check. Queen f7, mate. He found it. He, I mean, it shouldn't have been a win. I don't think, I think he, um, Georg Meyer blundered, but that was incredible play. And there goes the ambulance. Perfect timing. Let's go over to Vincent Keimer winning thought, his game. I thought F6 was hanging. Couldn't he just take it because the rook is pinned? Well, I'm checking a second, but here comes the ambulance. Everybody can hear <laughs> it. Perfect timing. It's needed for Georg Meyer, but look at this mate by Vincent Keimer as well. I just pulled up the game. Knight F6 okay. checkmate at the end. Wow. Just... Then the queen is pinned, that is check and mate. So two huge wins here. One for Games the block. The, on the comeback. One for the blitz streams, one for the Baden Baden snowballs, which leaves just one game left in this match, I believe. Oh no, it's over. Maxime Lagarde wins for the blitz streams against Kirill Alexanko, and that means Khan wins eight and a half, seven and a half. What a finish here. We couldn't even catch all the action, but a mate by Maxime Lagarde. A mate by Vincent Keimer, a mate by Jan Christoph Duda in a position that, well, back as you were just saying, Alexandra, after this knight f6 came in with check, it looks like queen takes f6, well, then rook takes d1, and yeah, that's, the game continues here for sure. White is up a right. pawn, but the black c pawn is very dangerous in this end game. I'm not even sh sure who's better once the, the rooks get traded, but I don't think black right. is in real danger of losing with his past c pawn. Instead, he goes down in defeat after knight f6 check. He walks right into the checkmate with king g7 and knight d7 check for the queen of seven mate. So good on Duda for fighting this out. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, very nicely done, Duda. Now Duda has four and oh. Four and oh. Can't stop him now. Can't stop him. Can't stop him. Oh, oh. All right. No more singing. How did MVL? No, that was good. How did MVL do this round? Uh, MVL is at two and a half. Oh, I picked him, but that's okay. I forgive him. So what, don't worry. We got to go to mosquito. Those the mosquitoes are up two on the turtles, and the bears are up one on the raptors. So I just pulled up Hippolito Assis Gargatagli's game with the white mm -hmm. pieces against Michael Bazold. Michael Bazold has three and zero score for the bears, and here he is the black side of this position 
where he's even on material, but I love White's position because his pawn on c5, it's doubled, sure, but it's passed. And once this a file opens, you're either you're going to have a weak pawn on a6, or I'm just going to take on b5, we'll trade, and then my rook can enter the position. So Right. And, and Black is trying to make that a little bit more complicated with his bishop on e5. So obviously b4 moves like that can't be played right away. But White can pretty easily continue his plan after he castles, brings in another rook, and yeah. he has quite a nice advantage going into an endgame here. For sure. So where else is in this match? Donatello is playing against Joppy 2. That's Yuri Borshek um, versus... Artist and Pizza Racer. I can't control whether Hess dances or not, but you guys can peer pressure him just as well as I can. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> Reject. Yeah, total rejection there. Sorry. I know it's Valentine's Day, but sometimes you got to hit that reject button. Uh, what's going on in this game oh. between Borshek and... Um, he said that without even flinching. He's just like, he's just so used to it. Anyway. Me rejecting people? Yeah. I mean, it just has to happen sometimes. Right, right. Okay. We're going at the Yuri Borashek game. Like, what's going on in this position? There are too many pieces in the center. Yep, just got to this position. So I'm going to do what Hess does and say, first, let me figure out the material. Okay, White is down a pawn here. Wait, no, no he's not. White's he has a rook. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's important to figure out the material. I, exactly. White is up a rook. Well, not up. It's interesting. A rook for a knight and pawn. There we go. And it's just so, like... Everything's just so cramped together there in the center. It's giving me a headache. Well, it's going to simplify soon because there's two exchanges being offered up here. How would you decide which one to go for here? You're black. You have a minute. Bishop takes c4. Looks like it works. Bishop takes e3. Looks like it works. What do you pick? So he took on e3, and Borshek had a pre-move. Also, this match is officially over. Amsterdam's up 8.5, 6.5. Oh, wow. Okay. Which means that we should soon focus more. Whoa, the Norway gnomes also lost already. Yeah, they got killed. Ay, ay, ay. I don't even feel bad. <laughs> it's just so one-sided. You know, there was no heartbreak. It wasn't like Baden-Baden against Khan. It was, you know, it was not close at all. Hey, I am heartless. Uh, I'm not going to disagree after that comment. <laughs> wow. You're supposed to, you know, be here for me. But I also am always promising to be honest with you. That's true. Because that's how true friendships are formed. I appreciate your honesty. Yep. So what do you make of this position with Borshek before we head on over to the Berlin match, just because this is the last game here of this match? You know, both sides have nearly a minute left. White has a rook, but it's a knight and two pawns for Van Forest. How are you feeling about this? Well, I actually think this is easier for black to play. I... I'm trying to figure out why. I guess knight e2, knight g3. It's just easy to hop around with the knights here. So I feel like he is the one who might be able to get an attack. His knight on f6 is also very well placed because it's protecting the e4 pawn. Yep. His h4 pawn is a little bit overextended, but no serious threats, and his king is safe. And I see actually a mating pattern. Knight e2 check, king h2, knight g3, rook f4, attacking my mm -hmm. h4 pawn. I go g5. You take my knight on f6, and I go rook to b1, trying to get rook h1 mate. So you got to always yep. think, if I have a knight and a pawn on h4, I can go for checkmate. Okay, I think white can manage to get out of that, but um, just keep that in mind. So I mean, knight f4 to h5, he didn't want that forcing variation that I just pulled up because I think it traded too much stuff. Instead, knight 4 to h5, so it can later go to g3. But knight f5 goes right after the h4 pawn. It also throws mm -hmm. knight d6, aiming after f7 and e4. So it looks like... Right. Well, Jordan has, okay, Jordan is in time pressure, but it's easier to blunder as white in this position, so I assume he should be yeah. able to. Okay, but he went there, so I take that okay. knight and play rook c3 and win that g3 pawn. That's what I would do. Right. He did it. I think now I would prefer white here. Again, I don't think if you put this on a computer, it would show that white is better, but now that there are less mating patterns the h4 pawn is off my king feels more safe yep and i guess black has a pass pawn so it's really hard to push but yeah and g5 g5 knight f4 is something that i think is black can do but 6.5 seconds left not really mm -hmm. ideal um, so we'll stick with this just for the conclusion i know amsterdam is won so even if van forest loses it doesn't matter mm -hmm. but jordan is pretty great He's a great player. He's, uh, I'm not too worried about his position. Daniel Clipmaster is going to show your dark side to the world. 
Really? We're going to get a compilation of Robo Hess clips at some point. It's going to be great. Can't wait for oh, it. Oh, Savage Hess. That would be the best YouTube video ever. Savage anyway. Hess is a compilation of me just being mean and rude and... Okay. <laughs> not mean or rude, just... The, the good type of savage, <laughs> not, not, not the bad type. Okay, I got it. But right Just uh, not, a, not an emotional flower. That's all. Oh, well, yeah. maybe I want to be the whole tree and not just the flower. Okay, well, that makes more sense. Oh, whoa, yeah. hang on. He just missed a Wasn't win. Rook A6 winning. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Rook A6 check, forces the king to F7, Rook A7. So he missed yeah. that, and now he's still better. Okay, now he's going to almost deliver a checkmate. I wonder if they see that they miss these moves and get temporarily psyched out. Whoa, white is going to win this. I think it was. Okay, so. He can't take the knight because of e2. Can he take it though? Rook f5, e2, mm -hmm. rook f7 check. Is that possible somehow? I think it was. Maybe. But I then can't you block the check with rook e7? Ooh, you're sneaky. Yeah. Sneaky, sneaky. You right. You right. Um. What? Black one on time? I thought, the flag! I, I thought like someone resigned and I see black one on time. Okay, we got to get off this game. That is a dirty flag if I've ever seen one. Did yeah, for when Robert just says super harsh things, like it's nothing exactly. Like when you're talking about rejecting people. I mean, oh my I'm just speaking my truth and that's all you can ask for me. So I have a, a Reek Braun against Daniel Forsen here. That's baby legs against D Forsen and black is in business you know why alexandra you just recovered so fast from that yeah i just i threw it out of my mind because i gotta yep. get to the okay. chest so you you tell me why as my heart regains oh, you want to sing tell me why pace. ain't nothing but a heartache there you go i feel like that was you really lined me up perfectly there but um, yeah I, I didn't hit the notes but i got yeah, the reference you did you didn't hit the notes at all but here <laughs> Here, b5, b4, and I just think that white's position just collapses instantly. b5, b4, okay. I mean, we talked about tunnel vision last time we were doing commentary, and here you pay attention first to the king side because that's where the action is happening. But black is protecting everything. His bishop on f8 is actually very solid. Yep. His knight on e6, double reinforcement there, and he can just break open with b5. Yeah, and this pawn h6 is a very helpful pawn for black because that pawn was gone. Rook h3 check would be a huge issue. Instead, that pawn remains, and yeah, this is not good news for white. B5, B4 collapses the yep. entire position. And there's just no way for white to break through on the king side. Um, his pawn, again, on h6, third game of the day with this theme, eh, like second and a half, but close enough where the opposite color pawn is being used as a blockade by the king. If yep. the pawn wasn't on h6, it would be losing, but he didn't take it, and white can't sack on g6, no other way to stop it. Yeah, and b4 just comes. So this game looks like it's going to be winning in favor of the bears. That would lead them to a 7.5, 5.5 lead because they're already mm -hmm. up one game. So let's go to the burger burger. Let's see if he can do something well. Also, Chess Genie quickly asked why not knight takes f4 in this position since it looks like it's just a hanging pawn. Um, so knight takes a four. It's also good. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Yeah, nothing wrong. There's just so many good moves. It's uh, a very good move. Knight, knight takes a four. I guess the only thing is if some point white can play e6, you're like, you know, maybe this bishop and queen can finally get open, but that's not realistic either. So knight takes a four, perfectly good move. Thank you mm -hmm. for asking the question. And Yep. Um, we like questions here. But this is... so. Arik Braun is winning. Someone just finished. That was uh, Car Carlos Diaz Camayanga beat Marco Baldolf. Oh, gosh. Look at the final position in reg uh, regular legs. Sorry, what, what is their username? Regular, regular legs. legs. Yeah, we have a baby legs and a regular legs, so they're clearly teammates. And oh, my gosh, it's brutal. I can't look at it anymore. Hurry up. Find oh, the game. Oh, this is really nice. I found it. I just, I've been speechless. Um, oh, it hurts. This is, no, 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 this is beautiful. Bum, bum. I'm kind of sad they didn't play it out, though. There's just nothing to do here. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you're getting mated on G1, so you take, take, and back rank mate. So someone asked a question about the other game again, I see. And um, Groove Oz, the end. 
Asking about this move, bishop e7, which looks like it traps the queen on f6 in the game between Forsen and Braun. But the problem mm -hmm. is, after bishop e7, the f7 pawn is now hanging. So you got to be careful yep. about that. Exactly. So, just, just... so there's only one matchup left, and we're looking at a game between the Berlin Bears and the Barcelona Raptors. Yes, and we're looking at Burger Burger going 0 out of 4 because I'm pulling up his game and it makes me cry inside. He's just worse with the white pieces. How many pawns is he down? Just one. Okay, he's only down one pawn. Feels like that's a good day for him, or a good, good sign for him on this day. I will say, though, that other than the Amsterdam Mosquitoes, the higher-ranked teams today have been losing. Yeah, a lot of upsets. Yep. Yeah, and... Here between Berlin is the higher seeded team, right? There, mm -hmm. is that right? Am I making that up? Oh no, I thought the Raptor. Well, hang on, let me check. No, you're probably right. Uh, you, I believe no, you. Berlin is second to last. Ooh, so Berlin really needs this, but the Raptors yeah. are in third place, and they would like to crawl up into second. Exactly. I mean, the, the Raptors, the Gnomes, and the Snowballs have just been wrecking this division so far, but we're, we're getting some hungrier teams like we said yeah i'm trying to see what's going on in this game between burger and I'll, thank you I'll, tagmon what tagmon do he just said thank you Aww. and tagmon is always awesome in chat that's right putting a smile on my face so i try to think as often as possible tagmon the aussie fan yeah yeah i remember I, you know and, and tagmon always has super clever chat comments i've noticed for sure and so does cash Mankey, so i gotta give cash Mankey a shout true. as well that's true um, boom, okay. um, so rook on h8 can go over to b8 or a8 to attack these pawns, right? Just these squares mm -hmm. feel vulnerable for black. But if that black king goes, does he want to go to f6? But then rook d8 is annoying, right? King f6, not f6, pawn f6 I don't want to play. King f6, white can go rook d8 even. And the problem is it forces the king back to e7 because the bishop's trapped. Right. And wow, it's funny that the bishop's trapped like this. So... Alejandro. It's, it's funny and sad. Um, maybe he can sack e5, try to get his bishop free, but... Nah. nah. No, it's actually... White has some chances to hold on to this game for sure. Uh, if I'm black, I'm certainly putting my rook behind the h-pawn. I don't... Mm -hmm. you know, when there's a pass pawn, you want to get your rook behind it, but... You know, I, you can't really kick my rook out of h8 either. That's true. Um, White has... Yeah, his king is in the best position he can be, but there's no way to improve it from there. Same with his bishop. Yep. How about, are there any other games left in this match or no? I'm taking a look. Yes, there is a um, yes. Michael Bizold with black against Hippolyta. Gargatagli. Yeah, Gargatagli up in exchange here. He should be able to. Yeah, we, we saw that brutal game before where it seemed like he finally had a chance. So hopefully he can end strong. Yeah, and for Bezold, he was 3-0, and so this would be his first defeat. And Barcelona, they started this, this round down 6.5, 5.5. They already won one game, and they might go 4-0. That would be an incredible comeback for a team that has just been consistently strong throughout the league. Don't, don't call it a comeback. They've been here for years, okay? Like, they're... Come Come back from the rounds today. I know, it was a pop culture reference, Alexandra... Don't... Barcelona's been around for years. No, you, you, you're hurting me here. Watch, just look in the chat. They'll, they'll tell you what that's from. Chat, pretend you don't know. They definitely know. That hurt. It hurt. It's actually, it, it's, it's a throwback reference, but th they'll get it. They'll tell you soon. I'm waiting for All it. All right. All right. We'll see. I'm waiting for them. They don't. They don't... don't do it, chat. Yeah, they're, they're disappointing me right now. They don't know. <laughs> How does no one know, don't call it a comeback, I've been here for years? You don't know LL Cool J? Are you kidding me? Are you? There <laughs> okay, we go. Cash Mankey knows. Okay. Yeah, what okay. is going on here? Okay, this game is... I'm, I'm going to roll that reference in my favor. <laughs> this is... I'm actually upset with the chat now. <laughs> I think they know and they're just um, messing. I got you, Robert. I'm also 34 with a kid. Yeah, well. Oh, gosh. Okay. okay. So Let's not hurt hurt. It's Robert true. LL Cool J as a rapper is old because LL Cool J now is on TV shows instead. Uh, okay, let's go to chess. Focus, Robert. Focus. 
focus. I need to right. focus. Let's go back to the burger burger because this game, Bazold is four seconds. He's down in exchange. Um, just don't get checkmated, actually. Before we leave this game, uh, you have to watch out because rook takes b5, rook e2 check. If you go king, if my pawn was an f5, rook f2 would be mate, but it's not, mm -hmm. so king e4 still escapes. Okay, I'm going off this game. So it's safe. Okay, we're back to the Alejandro Diaz and Steve Berger game. I was oh, yeah. really rooting for Alejandro Diaz, and I know I said that at the start, but so far he's gotten half a point, which is really sad. That's a half point more than Berger has. That's true. So it's battle of the bad results, good players day. There we go. Complimented and spoke the truth. So, yeah. Black is just still up his two pawns here. Yeah. He's going to have to break through in the center eventually, but he has to be careful to not lose a7, although his king and bishop are so close that it's not that much of a concern. Yeah, and already there's a problem for white. King d4 runs right into rook f3, winning the f pawn. So. Yep. King d4 played. Um, rook f3. That looks really White good. will have to take on a7, at least get a pawn back, but... And black has three connected pass pawns and all of his pieces close to the pass B pawn, so it's not very scary. Yeah, and then even if I lose my rook for the bishop or something, as long as I get the pawn, three pawns and a bishop against a rook is going to be pretty easy to win. So rook f3 here, and I would even... Well, actually, rook f3, you can't go king d4 because e5 comes. This is just totally lost. Yeah. And, and also, chat, we're, we're joking about feeling old. I mean... Are we? We just, we just like... We, we like to make jokes about you, but being 30 is not old. No, for sure not. So who won for the Bears? Because I see that it's tied 7.5, 7.5. So it... Okay. Um, Bezold lost. Uh, Forsen... Okay, so Gargatali won his uh, game. Forsen lost, so that's where the Bears won. So Arik Braun yeah. won his game. Got it. Confused. So th this game needs to be drawn for the match to be a tie, or if somebody mm -hmm. wins, in this case Alejandro Alvarado Diaz, then the Barcelona Raptors are going to win. Yep. What a nice comeback. You could try the reference again. No, it's too late. <laughs> it's way Rejected. too late. Yeah, I feel I feel hurt, really hurt. Oh, Bishop B five with the pin. B five. The king goes back to C seven and. You're not getting a queen anymore. Yep. And that's what we were talking about earlier with Black's king being so close that he doesn't even have to worry about potential threats like that. Yep. What would be a potential concern is if somehow you lose this e6 pawn and this king mm -hmm. on b5 is very active, then there are some decent drawing chances, but rook takes b7 here. Yep. No issues. Just king d7. This is one of those positions where even if your king was super far from your pawn and rooks were off the board, black is still winning because white can never take the pawn on e6. Right. Oh, I almost I almost hoped for a checkmate there. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately yeah. there's one square remaining for this king. Unfortunately. Well, hey, my pick did get the winning point for his team, so I don't feel bad about cheering Alejandro Diaz on. That was great. That was, yeah. And um, sorry, I just looked at the core of my eye. Johan Sebastian Christensen has four seconds left. But okay. Steve Berger, I picked you on my fantasy team, man. You let me down today. I'll still pick you in the future. I respect your game. It's okay. S is loyal. Don't worry about it, Berger. Wait, isn't Fresine up an entire rook and has an attack going on here? Yep. How did... What? Why? Hang on, counting pieces. And now he can just take the knight as well? Yeah, that looks... Are you serious? Resign time. Okay. <sighs> one, one last game. Yep. One last game. Why do they have so much time left? Johan, Solomon, Jules, Musard. Well, this is, looks good for black at first glance. Oh, look at this tactic. If rook, takes, if rook takes b3 instead of bishop g3, knight d3 with check. Your king needs to stay on e2 to protect his knight on uh, d2, but then knight c1 check picks up material. Right. Nice. I mean, the gnomes are going to win this game. It'll be 5-10. So it's a little bit... I, I actually can't say. 5-10 is pretty bad. 5-10 is average, right? It's the average male height. It is? 
I don't know, five nine. I don't know. I'm short. I don't know these things. <laughs> but depends on the country. Depends on. That's the country. very true. I was thinking the U.S. Knight e6 played. The knight's coming into f4. You can't take on b3 with the rook because knight c1 check comes. If you take mm -hmm. on b3 with the knight, then c4 is pushed and the rook on a3 is hanging because of the bishop and the pawn on c4 hits the pawn, uh, the knight on b3. Yep. Bum, 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 bum. I, what else? Is there anything very instructive here? I mean, do you guys have any questions about how you would play this if you were black? Maybe we could look at it from Black's perspective. You want me to flip the board around? Yeah, let's flip the board around. Sometimes it's harder to find winning positions and it's easy to mess them up. So that might be a little more interesting here. So he took the H pawn, gave up the B pawn, and then pushed the H pawn of his own. And I just saw a comment there. I feel like Johan Salomon is the ultimate Norwegian name and Jules Moussard the ultimate French name. It's kind of funny. That's so true. That's, that's funny. Um. Okay, so he just simplified to get two pass pawns on the king side here. He had to calculate a little bit to make sure that bishop takes a7 isn't a serious threat. And they say the threat is stronger than the execution. But True. Now king, um, king f5, just move forward. Yep. Hang on. Wait, that was the wrong square. Look at me, just, I wasn't thinking. You should have gone to h5. Yeah, you h5. you're so right, oh. king h5 was safe. King f5 okay, is sorry. See, this is what I mean about having to convert winning positions, but now it's fine again. Yeah, you tricked me. I, I No, I got scared for a second here. I thought a white had something. Well, now what do I do? Bishop d6 and trade bishops? That looks good. Whoa. I don't know who's better now. Is Jumusar going to win this game from a... Because he can take, take on a7 and there's no more pass pawns? Yep. c4, though, covering the third rank. Rookie three check is always going to be an option now. <laughs> Okay, I got, hey gnomes, I lied. Five ten is an okay score. Just go for it. Yeah. There we go. Fight for it. So knight. Wait, can I take on a seven or do I go knight c six? I'm so confused. Can we flip the board around again? <laughs> yeah. Let's e go back. It's easier to understand this position from. I mean, every ever since we flipped the board, I made mistake after mistake. So I'm gonna go back to having. Jules Moussard with the white piece in the bottom. Well, why do you think that happens? I'm just so used to having white on the bottom, right? Every chess game, you know, that I look at, because the chess.com's interface has white on the bottom. But I mean, right. I'm going to flip it back around. I need to train myself. No excuses. Let's, go. let's go back. Sorry, chat. I know it's going to be a little bit of a flip there, but Jules Moussard. Oh. Jules. Sorry, I just noticed that it was 4-11. I, I thought the score was... Oh, you thought yeah. Was... Thanks, Real Dodgemon. Got it now. No, I was just looking quickly at the central division and it hadn't been updated. So I just read out the score similar to how when you're trying to keep up with chat, you read out comments. I don't have to explain myself to you guys. You don't explain yourself to anybody. Yeah. Because you are a strong, independent woman and you owe nobody no apologies. Did I just get some snaps from you? Yeah, of course. Let's go. <laughs> I got your back. Go. I know. I know. That, I've already told you the story of, um, no, I'll tell you later. Now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, chat, you're not getting this yeah, story. Yeah, this, this is, you know, a story not for the Twitch, Twitch sphere. Okay. Um, I don't know what to do anymore. This game is not moving. Why do you have so much time left? Your match is completely over. Jules. Yeah, five plus ten is not 16. We know, Archmage, we know. Alexandra Sastez says versus Torix. Oh my gosh, what is... <sighs> bum, bum. Does Jules, have... I'm trying to see if he has, so Black's King, it can escape to F5. Um, does it have any other squares it can go to? D4, okay. Are there any, like, Knight F6 is an option. Knight F6. I'm not sure if it's good because the King can just Go back to f5 so maybe there's no need to give a check first yeah the king is the f5 square that tuck itself yeah. into so what, what can we go after the a7 pawn somehow right that's what white needs to win to get that a pawn pass so wait if i go knight c6 
This Why way. is there a horse? Steel Wing is here for the casters. Well, that's very sweet of you, Steel Wing. Um, this is the final game, so you're in for something exciting here. Okay. I mean, nice Bishop C seven. Oh, he, he moved. Bishop C seven and Rook B seven. Making space for his Rook. Okay. Whoa, that H pawn. This has been the most up and down, back and forth game ever. I don't know who's yeah. better. I, I mean, I'm clueless here. I'm not commentating, well, not because this match is completely over, and so this you know means nothing because eleven. It's to just four. very hard. Yeah. To figure it out here. Um, Black can't push h2 yet to try and promote because white can take it. So he. What is white gonna do here? Well, now h2 is a threat, I guess, because the 95 is hanging. True. Gosh, this is really hurting my head. Um, maybe knight f2 check just to kick your king out and then put my other knight mm -hmm. back. Right. Possibly, but there must be yeah. something else too. I, I like knight f2 because it's also protecting the h1 square, so harder to promote. Knight f2, there we go. Okay, I felt defensive. King, listen. king f5, just retreat that king. I definitely don't want... Whoa, there's got to be a mate here. Rook b7 to b3. Oh, knight g4 check. Where's the king going? There. Oh, take on f4. The g7 bishop's hanging. Yeah. Yikes. Clearing the... He just lost knight. a piece. There, he did it. Yep. And now he doesn't even have to worry about the pawn. Oh, he's going to flag. He blundered. This game hurt. Everything about this game was hurting. The score of the t the match score was already so over. Black probably was doing well. And then. I mean, Black was definitely doing well when we looked at it. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, too bad. It's funny because he had a very active king, which is an asset in that type of endgame, but it ended up being part of his downfall because. He tried to protect his... He just fell for traps with his king. Yep. And that was an important win for the migraines as they tried to come back in the standings because they were in sixth place. But a mm -hmm. win like that can push them closer to fourth place. Remember, the top four teams make the playoffs from each division. Yeah. Wait, Fresine and Musard both went four out of four is what... Um, no Sam, way. Sam Copeland is telling us. I, I believe he, that he said it. I meant no way more as a rhetoric method. Oh, actually, I can pull up everything here so I can see it for myself. Fresine. Oh, wow, yeah. look and at that. Duda. And Duda. So we had three people go 4-0 today. And look at the migraines. MVL, 3.5. Fresine, 4. Jules Moussard, 4. And Maurizio on board, 4. Okay, he struggled today, but ended up with half a point. But, yep. yeah. It's, been a, it's wow. been a day. I don't know what else to say. Vardis, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, Vardis. Did you just box? A little bit. It happened. It happened. Okay. It just it just happened. You know, just couldn't help it anymore. Tess is developing and gets better and better. Yeah, he's in the newest update on his system, so pretty good patch, if I may say so myself. Well, I appreciate the compliments here. But yeah. the the day is done for Pro Chess League. Yep. I mean, do you have any final thoughts here? It was nice to see one of the leading teams be able to stay on top of this. That was nice. Even though I like cheering for underdogs, it was a little painful to see these teams that have been performing so well get crushed. So, da-da, da uh, I thought you were doing like donut, like a shocking, like a thriller. That's what I was doing. I was trying to prepare his name with something shocking, played incredibly. I am just really excited because this shows how tough the pro chess league is and how quickly things might change. It's nice seeing people fight. What about you? Well, I, I'm interested as I look at the scoreboard here that the Blitzstreams won their match by the closest of margins, despite having zero points from their board four. So it, it can go to show that if you have an super super duper star on board one who's winning all their games then it can make up for the fact that your board four is struggling so if you look down board four sometimes we see a very strong board four like 24 50 go two and a half out of four here nobody did better than one and a half and uh, it just goes to show that you know sometimes it does pay off to stack the top of your lineup other times it's better to be even across the board so it, it right. takes their own 
Yeah, and that's a question that often gets asked by the commentators. So here, here we go. This was a great example. Um, chat, it's been great. Thank you again to everybody for watching. Commentators, I meant to say moderators, but by commentator, I meant Robert Hess hover over his face and give his channel a follow. What a smooth transition. When you say things wrong, please go do that, guys. And I'm trying to find out as well what we're rating, you know, speaking of other streamers, because I know Hikaru Nakamura is playing Andrew Tang in a match. So that's yep. something that everybody should keep an eye on. And that will be a lot of fun. So we're going to sign off. It's been a pleasure, Alexandra. Thank you again for another great day of Pro Chess League. And, um, well, I guess we should uh, get out of here, right? Yep. Thank you, guys. I had fun. So we're rating Hikaru, so definitely stay around. And thank you, Face Chess. Good to see you again in a Pro Chess League stream. I hope everything is going well with you. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks again.